Sorry, you couldn't hear my voice for the first 20 seconds. I forgot to unmute it. Hello, everybody. We're going to play old school karate while we talk karate. Old school karate kid while we talk Cobra Kai. I don't need to see myself here. I just want to make sure I'm positioned correctly. And then I'm going to turn this stuff off for myself so I could read the chat. What is up, everybody? How? Oh, I can still see myself. Good. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Can't hear you. I think I'm good now. I think I'm, I should be good now. I don't want the, the volume of the game to be too loud. You can hear it subtly in the background. I saw Silas, I think it was, wrote that he liked the retro jingle. This is actually the theme song to the Karate Kid arca Arcade. The Karate Kid NES game. This is the theme song you're listening to. So that wasn't a jingle I came up with. That was the Karate Kid original song. You're good now? Awesome. What is up? We're going to talk a little bit first. We're not going to jump right in. We'll hear the Karate Kid in the background. I saw Rootfish is like, react to Freddy Got Fingered. Freddy Got Fingered, I will happily react to, but I've probably seen Freddy Got Fingered a hundred times in my life. I absolutely love Freddy Got Fingered. I could probably almost recite to you every part of dialogue in the movie. I've... It's a massive guilty pleasure of mine. Let's just say that. I've even watched Red Letter Media, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was Red Letter Media did a review on Freddy Got Fingered, how they think he's actually a genius. And there was so much subtext behind the scenes that like it blew my mind when I actually watched them talk about it. Red Letter Media, it actually will blow your mind if you're into Freddy Got Fingered and you've watched it enough times and you really look deep into the things they're saying. Tom Green created a movie in the movie by getting millions of dollars and blowing it on stupidity. And in the movie, that's what he does. And that's what the movie is in real life. Genius. Go watch the Red Letter Media video on it. It's amazing. But... I'm going to read through the chat. Once I get caught up in the chat, we'll start playing the game. I remember this game, guys, being insanely difficult. Now, mind you, it says it came out in 87. So this is before Karate Kid 3 even dropped. But I remember this game being difficult. I remember it being short. I remember it being like five levels, maybe. And I remember getting extremely frustrated with a level with like rain, like a hurricane level. There was a hurricane level and it was freaking impossible. I just remember that. So we'll jump into that. I assume I'm not going to be able to beat the game. I'm thinking that the, the rain level is going to do me in. But yet again, I haven't played this in probably 30 years. Well, if I was in the future 30 years. Wait, no, 30? Yeah, it can't be 30. 97. 90. No, it could be 30 years. What am I talking about? I would be a younger man. So yeah, it's over 30 years. It's, it's 35 years since this video game came out. It probably... 30 years since I played it. I like the nice jingle. Yeah, that was Silas. This is the theme song for Karate Kid. What you're hearing in the background is the theme song for Karate Kid, the Nintendo game. We're going to play it in a minute. It's just it's just sitting there. Like, I can hit it. Like, look, Zach. I, well, maybe I can't. Well, I want it. Oh, I have to hit the start button. Maybe, I, maybe it froze on me. Oh, there we go. I have to just do that. Look up. Oh, say we can play it. We're not going to play it yet, though. I'm going to die it back down a bit. Die the volume down a tid. But yes, we will be playing this video game soon. Well, let's talk, though. Let's talk. Strike first. Z, Tom, is strike first. Strike hard. No mercy, sir. We're going to take a drink. I haven't had a drink yet today. If you guys didn't notice, I put up the Karate Kid cartoon. My brother reminded me this morning about it, and I was like, I'm going to react to it right now. I thought I was going to have to edit it up, and I wasn't sure if I'd have difficulty with the theme song and everything. The episodes are up in full on YouTube. I had zero problem. Instead of editing up for you guys, I just threw the whole thing up. So if you guys are wondering why it's not on Patreon, it's because the entire episode reaction is on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing. I didn't even edit it up. All I did was edit up my intro and exit, because sometimes... I run over myself and I talk way too much and I edit that up so you guys are spared the insanity that is me. But besides that, you could go watch the cartoon in full. I might, depending on how late I stay on here, I might even do the second episode of the cartoon and either throw it up tonight or tomorrow just because 
it is interesting. I've I don't remember it. I remember the theme song. I remember seeing like commercials or I don't know. Uh, my guess is the nostalgia critic does a lot with Saturday morning cartoons and commercials and stuff like that. And he's around my age. I must have seen it in something he did or someone else did. But my brother swears that I watched it. So I'm guessing that I watched the Karate Kid cartoon as a child. 13 episodes. I don't remember much, if anything, beyond it. No, I don't remember anything. I didn't remember anything. I didn't remember. Daniel is like Captain N, the Game Master. Miyagi is voiced by a different guy. Close enough where I could buy into it. But Miyagi was wrestling alligators in the first episode, swinging from trees like Tarzan. And just, I mean, the beating the crap out of everybody did happen in the movies. But, I mean, he does it in epic fashion in this one. My God, somebody will satisfy your wishes online. Let's not have that happen. I'll have to have Ray come in and monitor. Mediate. Oh, shoot. Really cool. Cobra Kai season four was crazy. Yes, it was. RG Cobra Kai. Z Thomas. Tom Green is a pioneer for many internet trends. I love Tom Green. Tom Green, not to go off on a Tom Green tangent, but I've... Love Tom Green. Since he had the Tom Green show, I think it was MTV. I was young when Tom Green had that show. But Tom Green, I like insane people that are unique in great ways. And he never really did anything violent. He didn't curse a whole lot. He just had like fart humor, so to speak. Like just stupid humor. But he's a genius behind the scenes. Tom Green is a genius. What do we got here? All right, we got something up. Bop, 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 bop. I was big into the NES, SNES Power Rangers game. I think they play similar. I did have the Power Rangers game for SNES. My sister was a huge Power Ranger fan. I have all the toys from the 90s. I have every Power Ranger action figure you could imagine still in the original boxes. All the villains, all the Power Rangers, I kid you not. I don't know if they're worth anything nowadays. But back when I was collecting them they were going for like some high value i feel like the villains some of the villains i feel like were worth the most like because they were the rarest but i have a lot you know i really wish jack from kicking it was in season five he is a really talented martial artist and great actor what is up amar you know i really wish jack from kicking it what is kicking it jack from kicking it i don't know what that is it was in season five from kicking it. Jack from from kicking it was in season five. I'm trying to think of what you're talking about. What was I just talking about? It was in season five. I need a refresher on why I'm brain farting on that. Are you team Cobra Kai, Miyagi Do, or Eagle Fang? Mm, on it. I mean, I'm part everything. I if you watch the reactions, Z Thomas, a kids show. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I got you. I got you. Back to the other question. And I'll go back to that. Team Cobra Kai, Miyagi-Do, or Eagle Fang? I would have to say, I'm all of them. I was an advocate for the kids learning everything. I have learned many martial arts disciplines over my life. I've done pretty much everything. I took Taekwondo for five, six, seven years judo for three or four years i boxed i did mma with friends who were literally amateur fighters in mma like paid guys kind of thing so i've pretty much done it all the thing i probably do the least was wrestling like grappling i feel like grappling and wrestling but judo is a lot of throwing you use blah, 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 blah. you use a lot of momentum like body momentum and stuff like that but i feel like if i lack in any area it's wrestling which is funny because i'm probably built more like a wrestler i have a lot more mass and i have a lot more strength as opposed to like boxers and karate fighters and stuff like that are usually more lean and slender like daniel or johnny's got johnny's like bulkier but johnny's even like more lean i got like more size i feel like i'm like a bigger dude i'd be like a running back in football not a wide receiver kind of thing what do you think of Jess? Well, here, I'll get back in a second. I want to have a drink. We're going to have a drink. Who wants the first drink dedicated to them? What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take a, a, a nice little drink. I'm going to finish my coffee because I was exhausted today. I passed out for a few hours after work. I didn't even know if I was going to get back on, but I got a little boost and I had a coffee. So 
We're going to have a drink. I'm going to finish my coffee. And then we're going to jump into Karate Kid. And maybe we'll play some kind of like drinking game with it while we still talk Cobra Kai. We'll have to see. But for now, let us have a drink. Who wants the, the first drink dedicated to them? I already have a glorious glass of bullet bourbon chilled. You can see the ice on the bottom. I just brought it out. It looks like it's melting in my hand as we speak. But I'm not going to drink it all. I'm just going to have a sip. But we will go back to the comments in a minute. But yeah, if I had to pick Cobra Kai, Miyagi-Do, or Eagle Fang, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go Eagle Fang. Because I said it many times, Johnny's my dude. I agree with his method overall. Like, if I had to go with one and I couldn't combine them all, and you're like, nope, gun to my head, have to pick one, I'd have to go with Johnny's Eagle Fang because he has... In my opinion, the most balanced of all of them. I feel like I feel like Cobra Kai is too far one way, and I feel like Miyagi Do is too far the other. I feel like you got extremes of offense and defense. I feel like Johnny is an equaler mix, even though Johnny is still more aggressive, more offense. He's basically Cobra Kai without being a douche and breaking rules and being violent. But I feel like he could go a little bit more towards the Miyagi-Do way, but not much. So Eagle Fang is as close to what I like as possible. We're going to take a sip. I'll finish the comments. Thank you all for joining. Throw up a like on the video, guys. I figured I'd do a live stream because so many people responded to the Cobra Kai videos. I figured let me do a talk with everybody since I didn't get all my thoughts out and now more stuff has come out with interviews and stuff like that. I have an interview that I reacted to. I didn't post it yet, but we could talk about it because I wasn't sure if I should post it. You guys let me know. I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. I reacted to a video that came out two years ago where John Kreese, Martin Cove, was talking. It was a Collider video. If you know Collider, Collider was big with movie reviews, stuff like that. I used to watch Collider all the time. And I remember when they had the entire cast of Cobra Kai on. But in this specific interview that I reacted to, I did not remember this because it wasn't relevant back then. But Kreese talks about Dutch for a couple minutes Chris talks about Dutch on how Dutch and him in real life are friends. I believe I have to go. I reacted to it so I could go and see what I thought of it myself. But I'm pretty sure from what I saw, he said that him and Dutch in real life are friends and that he was supposed to be part of the reunion episode. If you don't know who Dutch is, Dutch is one of Johnny's friends. I'm thinking that Dutch, I also saw a bunch of people in the comments were writing it. One or two other people I saw reviews for were mentioning the whole Dutch angle. But the second Kreese went to prison, I'm like, all right, who's in prison that Kreese could run into? And I was thinking maybe Miguel's father at first, but then I rewatched Cobra Kai after I saw season four. And I'm like, oh my God, Dutch is in prison. They flat out said Dutch is in prison. Then I rewatched the Collider interview which I didn't even think would be relevant, but he talks about how Dutch in real life is friends with him. Him and Martin Cove are friends in real life, and he was supposed to be part of Cobra Kai, but something happened with scheduling conflicts or something, and because it was only season two, and it wasn't that big of a deal, and they got all the rest of the guys, I feel like they were just like, hey, we're just gonna do this, and hey, whatever happens, happens. But then Cobra Kai blew up, and now is what it is, and I feel like... That, even though that interview was two years ago with Kreese, I feel like that interview could be the perfect reason why Kreese went to prison. He's in life real friends with Dutch. Dutch wasn't able to do the reunion in season two, so now, what better way to have Dutch included in the show than to have Kreese go to prison, runs into Dutch, they're friends in real life, so they must have great banter together. They acted together in the movies. I believe in the interview, if you guys want, I'll post the interview. You let me know. Should I post the interview that I watched with Kreese? two years ago talking about Dutch because it's only like two minutes and I do talk about how I feel about it and stuff, basically what I'm saying now. But the interview is interesting. You can go find it. I mean, it's on the internet. But it was interesting how two years ago, Kreese is talking about Dutch going to prison because conflicts in the schedule and now Kreese goes to prison and you could easily bring Dutch back. It would be a great way to have Dutch brought back in the series because if you think about it, you can't really have a reunion with Johnny and the guys again. That's been done. It would kind of be silly and cheesy to have Johnny go 
back to the guys and all like do another cross country bike trip again. So this is perfect. It's like, hey, we could bring Dutch in. It all makes sense. Crease will have a new buddy in prison who's also a martial artist. Maybe he'll also help Crease. They'll build a bond and and basically show they can't be screwed with in prison. Maybe they'll even make more friends and Crease will come out and have a rival dojo to Cobra Kai. That would be funny in itself if Crease ends up going against Cobra Kai just because now he has no other way to do it. I can't imagine he's going to go back with Terry, and I assume Terry's going to go to Mike Barnes. So, I mean, what, is Chris going to throw himself at the mercy of Terry Silver and come out of prison and be like, please accept me back? I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine Terry would throw himself at, at, at the, the mercy of anybody. Like, Terry would probably sooner die than do that. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I love the Dutch theory, though. I love the Dutch theory. It makes a perfect reason why Kreese wouldn't have a buddy in prison. I mean, you could just bring new characters in, and honestly, most shows would. But this show connects everybody, I feel like. I honestly think everybody in some way is going to connect. I saw a lot of people thinking that Tori's dad is going to be Mike Barnes. I don't think that's the case, but it's very possible they do that. I mean... It's they, they could do it like it's I mean, they could do whatever they want. I was saying how I think Devin Lee's father was the committee guy, but then they were all fighting and they had the perfect angle or segue for him to be like, that's my girl or something like that. And they didn't. We haven't met Devin's parents yet. I don't know if that's relevant. We haven't met a lot of the kids parents. So if you think about it, we don't ever meet parents. It's like one of those shows where these kids are all teenagers and they just run rampant beating the crap out of each other and we really don't ever meet parents. Once in a blue moon, like we met uh, Eli's mom and we, I mean, we meet people, but it's like they're, they don't matter. They don't matter. Their kids just run around trying to murder each other, getting the crap beat out of one another and and they just, they're just like kind of there. They're just there like Charlie Brown. They just womp, 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 womp. They just talk. All right. I'm getting off on a tangent. Guys, maybe we're, I'm going to run through the comments and then we're going to start playing a little bit. I actually am curious to see how far I could get in this game without getting massacred. I said it earlier how I feel like this game, as a child, it, it said 87. The game came out in 87. I was six years old. But I probably played it a few years later, so I was probably like eight or nine when I played this. Still, young. But I feel like I was an amazing gamer at a young age. I mean, I could just be insane. I mean, I don't know. I didn't have recordings. I wish I had recordings of me gaming at a young age. But I feel like I was above average for a gamer. And I also had a lot of Nintendo games. And I was a very chubby kid that played a lot. I didn't leave my house. I didn't play a whole lot of sports till the age of like 14 or 15. So I played a lot of NES. But we'll get into that in a second. Keep writing in the comments. I will catch up momentarily. Okay, we had a little sip. Let's go back through the comments real quick. Guys, put a like on the video if you're enjoying yourself. We will be on here for at least an hour. I'm going to try a couple run-throughs of this because I'm assuming I'm not going to be able to beat this game immediately. So we'll do a couple run-throughs, but we will continue to talk. I will run through the chat, and then I'll try the game, and then we'll go back and forth. What do you think of Jeff Bergman, Bugs Bunny, and Eric Booz Booza? Daffy Duck. Are you talking... The actual Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, are they the guys that do the voices? And that is Jonathan Vu, would it would a V? Vu? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But if you're talking original Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, I have one am surprised I did not know those are the names of the guys that did the voices of them, if that is what you're talking about. And two, I'm not a big Looney Tunes fan, which is funny because I have Looney Tunes clothes and I also love Space Jam. Like, I love Space Jam, and I have lots of clothes with Looney Tunes characters on them. I think it's that I dig the world of Looney Tunes and the characters, but I never really watch Looney Tunes. If they had, like, newer Looney Tunes stuff, maybe I would. I loved Animaniacs. I loved Tiny Toons. Tiny Toons was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. I, 
I still will watch Tiny Toons on occasion. Animaniacs was great. So maybe that's where the Looney Tunes in me is. But I do love the characters in Looney Tunes. I don't know. Maybe just the older cartoons. I just am not... Not I I mean you guys will notice on my channel I react to a lot of animated stuff. I just never really watched a lot of animated stuff besides Saturday morning cartoons. I feel like I always let Ray choose. Like I feel like my brother was more into cartoons and I kind of was just like whatever Ray picks I'll watch. Ray's my brother, in case you didn't know. Ray helps with a lot of things on the channel and stuff. But I feel like when we were little, I never really cared. I feel like movies were more my thing when I was little. So like I feel like I was more about the movies and then like it was like, hey, whatever you want to put on TV. I remember Ray watching a lot of Twilight Zone when we were younger. Quantum Leap. I, I feel like he might have got me into Quantum Leap or or something because Ray was all about Back to the Future, time travel, stuff like that. Ray had good taste, so it wasn't like anything he put on was bad. I, I kind of just went with it. What, it's a series on Disney. He was rumored to be in season five, but wasn't. Oh, we're talking kicking it. That was back from before. Johnny has learned not to cross the lines like with Crease. Johnny has learned not to cross the lines like with Crease. I got you. Yes, Johnny has learned. I'm wondering if Crease is going to go that route. Because at some point, we're getting into season five. At some point, when do you stop making Crease that guy? Because he's been that guy since Karate Kid 1. So if you think about it, people have to eventually grow. And Kreese has been that guy and faked being a different guy and gone back to that guy so many times. I feel like at some point you got to make Kreese become like what Johnny's becoming, even though it did take Johnny a while. But Johnny was only in the first Karate Kid movie. Kreese has been involved. I mean, Kreese. Yeah, I mean, Kreese has been in all of them except two. And he wasn't in season one of Cobra Kai till the very, very end. So I don't know. All I know is Kreese has been in it more than Johnny. So he has no excuse. Even though Johnny has been in more. If you count Cobra Kai, Johnny's been in more. So technically Kreese has some, some room to go. But back to the comments. Hey there, I'm from the UK and England. So very late here. I still have the 80s game on the NES. I have been to US on holiday many times. Since a small kid in the 80s, have you ever been Mikey P? That's Mikey P. Have I ever been to UK? I'm assuming you meant. If that is what you mean, if that is what you mean, I have never been outside the United States. I want to. I just always am working and I always have stuff to do. I can never get more than like two or three days off in a row. And even that never happens. That's like once or twice a year on like Christmas and Easter. Maybe I get two or three days off in a row. So it's really hard for me to travel. I also run companies and stuff like that. So I don't trust anybody running my companies and I have to basically, I never leave. I never leave my area ever. I, I go maybe to New York for the day or sometimes Atlantic City and that even that hasn't happened in 10 years so it's not often I travel but I would love to one day I really want to go to Europe Italy Scotland Ireland England I want to go to all of them France I want to do like the the tour the whole thing like because I feel like once I go I probably will never go again I'm all, I, I just turned 40 and I've never been outside of the United States so I feel like once I actually find the time unless I'm a multi-millionaire and I'm retired I don't feel like I'll have the time to do it ever again once I do it. So I have to enjoy it while I can, I guess. But yes, Mikey P, that is your answer. Kadunk. I think Robbie goes with Johnny down to Mexico because now the cr that crease is gone. He won't have any connections to Cobra Kai besides Kenny and Tori. Tori will also be mad. I don't know, though. That That's possible, and maybe... And it does make sense. And I mean, I mean, I guess it is possible because here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm thinking. Robbie and Johnny did, you know, make up at the end. They embraced. They they realized each other's differences and now they're buddies. And I feel like it's OK if you guys didn't watch the reaction I did to the interview with Daniel and Johnny. Johnny basically puts that to rest and says Robbie and him are cool now. So that's not an issue. But I find it hard to to believe that Miguel would be okay with Robbie coming down with Johnny. I feel like Miguel would almost feel like betrayed or almost like, dude, you followed me down here and you brought Robbie. But I mean, maybe it also is a way where they could all bond and build and grow. And then it'll be like a nice little group because 
they got to learn to deal with each other. If Johnny's going to keep dating Miguel's mom and something is going to go beyond that and they get married or what have you, I'm talking obviously distant future. But God forbid something like that happens. Robbie and Johnny are cool now. He basically has a stepson and a real son. And they got to get along at some point. So it would build and it would make for, I mean, a nice little bonding session. And then we'd have a, and not for nothing, then we'd like have three of my favorite people on the show. Besides them, I mean, Eli's probably my, I mean, it's hard for me to say because I do like everybody. No, that's not fair for me to say because I do like Tori. I do like Eli. I mean, there are a lot of people I do like. Hawk, Hawk's great, which is Eli, obviously. But I don't know. Going off on a tangent. Now I got to go back. We're, we're getting we're getting caught up. Steve McQueen's son. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Think about down to Mexico. Steve McQueen's son. What is Steve? Johnny has learned. What is Steve McQueen's son? Is somebody in this show Steve McQueen's son? It's funny because I was just watching a show earlier and I was talking about Steve McQueen. But who's Steve McQueen's son? Good theory with Dutch. Yes, post it, post it, meaning the interview with Crease. Tomorrow I'll edit it up and I'll throw up that interview with Crease that I talked about. It talks all about Dutch and everything like that. I reacted to it. I was just like throwing up so much material, I'm like, maybe I'll hold that one back or I won't even do it. I don't know. It was interesting, but I'm like, am I going too far with this Dutch theory? I also love, still love the 80s Karate Kid cartoon. Mikey P, I'm assuming you saw, I posted the 80s cartoon earlier today. I'm going to do another episode tonight or tomorrow. So I will do those. There's only 13 episodes and I believe they're all in full on YouTube and I don't have any problem editing them up because there's no copyright to be claimed when they're for free on YouTube. Jonathan Vu, question for Viewmasters. Can you do Sonic the Hedgehog voice? Can you do a Sonic the Hedgehog voice? Honestly, I'm not good at impressions, and I couldn't even think of how Sonic sounds right now. I'm trying to, like, in my head, I could barely hear it. I've seen the movie, and I've reacted to the new trailer. It's just hard for me to... I've only seen the movie, like, once or twice, it's hard for me to like envision the voice or like think of it, but I don't, I also don't do impressions, so it wouldn't be a good go anyway. Good theory with Dutch. We already saw that. I also love, still love the eighties cartoon. Would be interesting if Miguel's dad has his own dojo or teacher of martial arts of his own unlikely, but I could still hope a Mar. I said this in reactions, how I feel like they might do a boxing angle whenever they do movies where like it's a fighting movie and they go to Mexico. I kid, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just my experience, but almost every time I see a movie where they're on like the second or third or fourth sequel and it's a martial arts movie and they go to Mexico or Colombia or something like that, it ends up being like they're going sh hardcore boxing because that usually the greatest fighters are from places like that. So like, I feel like they go to places like that to infuse different styles. So I can't help but think that Miguel's father will be trained in some sort of discipline that isn't your typical martial arts. It's going to be like boxing or something like that. Or the dude's just going to be like a really bad dude involved in some serious criminal acts or something to that effect. Either way, I don't think you're that far off because I thought the same thing. Tiny Toons represent. Love me some Tiny Toons. Who the hell is Ray? Mr. Brew is in the house. What is up, my friend? That is my cousin. Hello, cousin. Ray, Ray, Gunner. Me, is that Ray? Me? Oh, it's a different Ray, Ray. Just kidding. I was going to say, I'm like, did Ray make a new name? You should watch Avatar The Last Airbender, potentially the best animated series ever. Amar, I have a couple episodes already chopped up on the channel, and I've reacted to the entire series of Avatar in full on Patreon. I just don't have the time to edit everything up, so it was a request by somebody on Patreon, a, a high-tiered patron requested Avatar The Last Airbender. I, re rah, 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 rah. I reacted to the whole series, all three seasons in full, from episode one all the way to the end. I believe it was like 60 episodes, give or take. I feel like it was exactly 60 episodes, 20 per season, and each one was like a book. But I reacted to all of them. I feel like there's only one or two on YouTube because, like I said, I throw them up there to let you guys know they're on Patreon. But when they're exclusives or requests for patrons, I want you guys to know they're on there. But it's way too hard for me to keep up with the edits. So I put them up there so you guys know. But Avatar is up there. So Amar, if you like 
Avatar The Last Airbender, go check it out. You can watch 60 episodes tonight, and I did them all in full. Avatar is on his patron. Jesse already said all that for me, I guess. What are your thoughts about the potential spinoffs? Which characters would you like to see and get their own shows? Ray Ray Gunner. I would have to say... I mean, Eli is... Hawk is probably one of my favorites. I don't know at this point if he'd be good for a spinoff because I feel like they've tackled so much with his character that they would basically just have to have, like, the life of Hawk and maybe he dates Moon or something like that. I just feel like at this point they've dug so deep into him it wouldn't be as entertaining. I do enjoy him, though. Tori would be interesting because we don't know a whole lot about Tori outside of her. We don't know what the heck the deal is with her mom, or we know what the deal is with her mom, but barely. Her mom is always sick. We still haven't seen who her dad is. They keep a lot of things secretive about Tori. They keep a lot of secretive things about a lot of characters. We still haven't seen how... Kenny's father. I I want to I want to talk about this for a second, and I will catch back up in the chat. But Kenny's father, military. You have to assume if Kenny's father's military in some way or fashion, he's going to connect to Silver or Crease. Even though Kenny's father is younger, way younger than Crease and Silver. Maybe I mean in real life, I don't know because of the age difference of everybody is ridiculous on the show, but. Because of the military angle with Kenny's father, I have to assume at some point, even if Kenny's father isn't directly related, that somewhere down the chain of command, it's going to come up. And Kenny's a Cobra Kai dude, so the fact that Kenny's dad is military might even bond them closer with Kenny. Like, holy crap, this dude's father's military, so we, we got to... We got to work with this dude and, and, and you know, get his brother on board. I mean, it might be a way to tie the family closer, have the Payne brothers. Every time... I, th I think of the Payne brothers. I think of the Bash brothers from Mighty Ducks. How I feel like the fact that they made Kenny this elusive tiny guy that could like stick and move real quick. And Sean is a much bigger dude. Sean is like twice the size of Robbie. At least he was in Juvie. And I have to assume if they're going to bring him in, they probably had that dude train. Because Robbie came back this season and looked jacked and crazy ripped. So I got to assume if they're going to make Sean a factor, they're going to make that dude work out and, and brush him up a little. Because not that he needed to get in shape. He was in shape. But he, I, I mean, they can make that dude look scary if they want to. He was a big dude. I feel like I've recognize that actor the actor that played sean Payne. i feel like i recognize that dude but i've never really thought about it or looked it up on imdb going off on a tangent going to catch back up in the chat but guys like the video subscribe if you haven't we will get to the game i promise i think it's funny that i've just been playing karate kid nes music in the background while we talk and we've been talking for almost 40 minutes what are your thoughts about the potential spinoffs? So yeah, I mean, if they did a spinoff, I mean, who would make the most sense to actually build on the story and make it entertaining? They could do a lot, though. Like, it depends where they go with season five. They could sideline something in season five. For instance, Crease. They could totally sideline Crease. Be like, oh, Crease is in prison now. Never bring it up in the Cobra Kai show and do like Crease in prison and have like a whole spinoff of Crease meeting up with Dutch. I, I know that's probably the funny thing is that might never happen and I might be totally crazy. But guys, you got to admit it makes sense. Martin Cove is friends with him in real life. He mentioned how they had to put him in prison because of scheduling, but he would have otherwise been in the show. And now two years later, two seasons later, Crease goes to prison and we still haven't seen Dutch, and we are bringing old characters and nostalgia back constantly. I mean, we brought the little girl back last season who was on top of the pole. We brought Chosen back even at the end of this season and last season. So, I mean, they're all about that. They're all about it. I can't see Redemption for Crease, but they will probably pull it off eventually. I feel like at some point, probably not... Anytime soon. Maybe like season six, they'll start building on it because now he's going to prison. If anything, I feel like season five will be the darkest time of Kreese's life. I feel like Kreese will be real down and out in prison. And even if he gets out, will be like vengeful and extremely negative. That's what I'm assuming. So season five is not redemption for Kreese yet. At least I don't think. Maybe towards the end of that. But I'm thinking season six is where Kreese might start coming around. 
damn shame you not been outside of the U.S. whole world out there, not even once as a kid then. Def do it, make it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Tick it off your bucket list and you will regret it even more so in 10 years. Mikey P, you are not wrong. Mikey P's talking about, I just said how I've never traveled outside the U.S. and I'm 40. I just turned 40, not even as a kid. I've literally, my entire life, I've been to California when I was like five or six years old. That is the only time I've ever been to California. And besides that, I've been on the East Coast. I've been to Florida, South Carolina, and then the tri-state area, and Vegas. I've been to Vegas once and Puerto Rico once. And that's pretty much the limits of my travel in the last 40 years of my lifetime. So I don't do a whole lot of traveling even in the United States. California is as far as I went and that was 35 years ago. Uh, um, bup, 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 bup. What is up? Oh, bi oh I, I, I remember you from the other chat. I can't remember if you're o o b a y d w o b a y d w. Hard for me to pronounce, but what's up, man? I think Tori will give S Sam the trophy. Ah, maybe. I mean, if she did, she'd have to switch sides because Cobra Kai would not tolerate if Tori gave Sam the trophy. But I mean, that's very possible because Tori saw that the refs rigged the fight or Silver did. Robbie does go with Johnny. They have been spotted in Puerto Rico and leaked photos from the sets show it too. Robbie does go with Johnny. I mean, I guess it's possible. I just, I mean, that it does make sense. I just feel like it would make it harder for him to build with Miguel if he brought Robbie. But I mean, eventually it inevitably has to happen if he's going to date Miguel's mom. So it's possible. I could see it happening. I did see they had photos leaked of Miguel with people like one of which they believe might be his father i saw that on somewhere somewhere like the other day i saw miguel he was with a bunch of younger people and they were like miguel's filming or or wrapped filming and there was an older dude who they were like that's probably the father and i can't remember who the actor was it was someone i'd never seen before so it's got to be some new guy or somebody i just never known i think the idea is that miguel isn't safe so robbie isn't just crashing miggy's vacation I get you. I mean, maybe what will happen if we're going to go that angle and this is true and there are photos of Miguel and Robbie with Johnny in Puerto Rico or wherever the heck it's. Wait, is it Puerto Rico? Did you say Puerto Rico? Are they going to Mexico? In Oh, maybe they're filming in Puerto Rico. Maybe it's Mexico, but they're filming Puerto Rico. Either way. It's possible that maybe they go in, Miguel runs into trouble, and then Robbie and Johnny swoop in and save the day, and now Miguel kind of has to be nice and be like, all right, you saved my ass, so I can't be a douche to you. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it'll work like that. But I, I mean, if there's photos and stuff, it's probably likely. I, I mean, I, I don't see any other reason unless it's like an end game thing where like at the very end, Robbie jumps in. And I mean, like maybe Robbie comes and tries to find Johnny, but I mean, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys do make sense because it isn't like Johnny and Robbie, it, it, Robbie has no reason to chase after Johnny if they just made up at the end. So it would make sense that they would willingly go together. I, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like Johnny would be like, that ah, might not be a good idea, but who knows? I mean, it makes, it makes sense and it seems like it's possible. How many more seasons do you think there will be of Cobra Kai? I'm thinking... I mean, guys, if it's making money, they'll run with it. And if the people want to keep doing it, and I feel like they're going to keep wanting to do it, you got to think, here's the the luxury of Cobra Kai. Everybody involved are like only known for Cobra Kai. There's nobody super famous in this show where you're like, oh, well, that guy's going to leave because he's got better things to do. I mean, they did say Miguel has been casted as the Blue Beetle in DC. So, I mean, I guess at some point he could be a factor, but I mean, how much are they going to use the blue beetle? I mean, he might be in a movie or two, but I don't think it's going to make that much a big difference. So you got Ralph Macchio, William Zapka, Martin Cove, all these people are only known for Karate Kid for the last 30, 35 years. They've never, they've never built careers off anything else. So I see no reason why they would want to leave 
It's not like their careers are going to, I mean, it's possible, but I feel like they're so passionate about this that they love doing it and they would want to go forever. My guess is this thing could run easily to season eight and beyond. My guess is no sooner than like a season eight will they stop because we already know season five's wrapped. I guarantee you there's a season six. So around season seven or eight is when they're going to start questioning the longevity. But I feel like season eight, at least, maybe beyond, to infinity and beyond. Somebody just gave a donation, just reacted to the episodes. I want Binary Brothers as a spinoff. If you did it, I mean, you could do it in the future. By the way, thank you, Xander Brow. I'm thinking I'm saying that right. Xander Brow. If I said it wrong, I apologize. Thank you for the donation. Awesome of you. That is a good one. Binary Brothers. And you could do it because Hawk and Dimitri are BFFs again. They're like best friends. And they've, I mean, they're, they're great together. They've had their differences, clearly. I mean, things got dark between the two of them. But Binary Brothers could be a thing, especially since you could have them, like, do double dates and stuff. Uh, Dimitri is clearly g hitting it off with Yasmin. And it looks like Hawk is going to have a girlfriend by next season, so the two of them could have a nice little double dating Binary Brothers spinoff. I like it. Interesting. I mean, see, that's a good way to look at it, because there could be things like that. You could even... I mean, I, I doubt they do this, but I'm just winging off the top of my head. Aisha was brought back in. You could technically have a spinoff with... Well, blah, 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 blah. You could technically have a spinoff with Aisha and have a, an, a whole other world of martial arts built in Santa Barbara. They made it a point to be like, she lives in Santa Barbara, but she's far away. I don't think they do that because they've already kind of not included that character for a long time and it'd be weird to give her own spinoff. But something like that is what I'm saying. Like something for somebody that's like off somewhere else. Another chat I do. Oh, it's Xander again. Xander Brow. I hope I'm saying your name right. You didn't say I, w I do a lot of short films and I kind of want to do a tournament arc video. I've been learning martial arts for choreography for a while. Film student in me wants to fight because of Cobra Kai. Xander Brow, I hope I'm saying that right. Very interesting. Do a lot of short films, and I kind of want to do a tournament arc video. I, You're learning? What martial arts are you learning? I'm curious. I don't know if you were in here before when I was talking. I've done 15 to 20 years of martial arts of all varieties. So I'm very familiar with Taekwondo and Judo. Those are the two biggest I've done. I've done over 10 years of Taekwondo and Judo combined. But besides that, there's a little boxing, a little grappling, what have you, mixed martial arts type stuff, Muay Thai, but very limited stuff of everything else. But thank you again for the donation. Great. I feel like I've seen your name before. I'm doing Wing Chun, mostly blocking and kicking. If I'm not mistaken, that is Ip Man, correct? Am I correct? Wing Chun... I'm pretty sure that is the the martial arts form of Ip Man, which is one of my favorite martial arts movies of all time, which is also Bruce Lee. Ip Man is the one. I, I am very familiar with martial arts movies. I've watched them my whole life. I'm pretty sure Wing Chun is that. I'm just like, I know so many. I, I might be slightly confusing it with something else, but I don't think I am. I used to have this game. Yup, Ip Man. Okay, figured it was. I, I There's some that sound so similar that like Hop Keto, Ip Aki, op, Akito, Hopkido. There's like so many different ones that sound similar that sometimes I don't think clearly and I'm I'm inaccurate. But Xander Brow, I appreciate the donations. That is very nice of you, my friend. And I recommend, that is probably, I see nowhere around me. I remember Wing Chun when I went around looking for, dis blah, blah, blah. when I went around looking for different disciplines that one you can never find. There's certain ones around me, at least. I live in New Jersey. Certain ones around me, you cannot find. Like Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu. I, I mean, now Jiu Jitsu is big, but 10, 15 years ago, when I wanted to learn Jiu Jitsu, you had to go to like Atlantic City. Hoist Gracie has schools all over, but I believe the closest one to me was in Atlantic City. And it's a two and a half hour drive for me. And that was like the only place you could learn jujitsu like 15 years ago in Jersey. I went to 
a judo academy in Westfield, Westfield, New Jersey. It was the guy that literally taught the Olympic team. He died. I feel like he died within the last 10 years. He was like, I took it 15 years ago and the dude was like 60 when I took it. So the dude passed away. I feel like he was in his 70s or 80s. Great dude. His name was Yanni. He was an Olympic coach and ran the school in Westfield for decades. So it was pretty awesome in that sense that I didn't have jujitsu around me, but about 20 minutes away from me, I had one of the greatest judo coaches in the history of the Olympics, and he was my teacher. It was very expensive, though. I remember that's why I couldn't go too long, because it was just, like, very pricey, and at a point, it was like things were more important and I was like younger and I couldn't afford it. My parents paid for it. It was, it was a, a pricey venture, but judo, probably one of my favorite martial arts ever. A lot of body momentum, throwing stuff like that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Like the video guys. If you're jumping in, subscribe. If you haven't, we're going to play the karate kid game. I said, once I catch up in the chat, it's just that there are so many lovely people in here asking questions. We haven't had a chance yet, but I mean, at some point we will. I mean, the longer we go through chat, the longer we'll play the game, the longer we'll be on. I honestly didn't know how many people would jump in. So it's nice to see we got 30, 40 people consistently watching the watching the live stream. We're going to take a drink. This is for Xander Brow, by the way. Cheers to Xander Brow. I'm going to have a little sip. This is bullet bourbon. Enjoying my Friday night. I got everything done. I had a long weekend last weekend. Now we're just kind of like riding it out and enjoying life and Cobra Kai and getting Karate Kid content out. I don't know what happens, but every, well, I do know what happens. Every time Cobra Kai drops, I go through like two weeks where I just can't do anything but Karate Kid. I've rewatched the first movie. I have it in 4K remastered, the original. I feel like all three came out recently because I see a lot of people talking about remastered versions of three, and I only had one, like Karate Kid Part 1. I've only had Karate Kid Part 1 in 4K. So, I mean, if there are others are out, I'm probably going to purchase the trilogy of Karate Kid in 4K. Maybe I'll rewatch two and three in 4K. Not that, I don't know if it'll show up for you guys, but maybe I'll notice a difference and I'll just be like, ooh, look, I could see... Uh, Carice's shoes are untied because the 4K resolution is so great and amazing. But we're going to have a... Sh uh, this is for Xander Brow. Thank you, my friend, for all the donations. You are a greater man than I. I don't know. But maybe... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cheers. Oh, it's so warm now. It's been sitting there. I was telling you guys earlier how it was so nicely chilled. That was 45 minutes ago. Now it has gotten warm. It's a little toasty in here. I'm a little bit of a, a toasty. Have you watched any Disney movies? Jonathan Vu. Disney is my sh jam. If you guys had ever seen my original videos before I started reacting in this room, the, the studio I call it now, before I started reacting in here, in my bedroom is where I used to react to all the videos, and behind my bed, often you would see a giant poster of all the Disney villains. I have been a Disney fan since I was a kid. It is probably, not probably, it is the place I've been to visiting most in my life. I've been to Disney World at least seven times, probably six or seven times I've been to Disney World, and that's more times than I visited every other place in my life combined. I've been to Vegas once, Puerto Rico once, California once, every other trip I've ever taken outside of the tri and Puerto Rico. I for always forget Puerto Rico. Four places I've been outside of the United States, not counting New York and Pennsylvania. Besides that, I've been to Florida six or seven times, and every time I ever went was for Disney World. I never went to Florida for any other reason but Disney World. And I am a massive Disney fan. So yes, there is only a few Disney movies I've not seen. I haven't seen The Princess and the Frog. I haven't seen... I hadn't seen Mulan till recently. I reacted to it. It's on Patreon in full. Because I reacted to it right before the new one came out. And I feel like there's like one or two others. I haven't seen Frozen 2. But I've seen Frozen 1. Great movie. Frozen 1 is probably one of my most... One of my most favorite. One of my favorite Disney movies. 
in the last like 10 or 15 years, I'd say Frozen 1 is, which is funny that I haven't seen Frozen 2 because I love Frozen 1 so much, but I'm a massive Disney fan. It looks like someone else donated over here. We got Xander Brow again, Johnny versus The Witcher, who would win? Xander Brow, thank you again, $1.99 donation, love it. I've never seen The Witcher, my friend. I've never played The Witcher either. I don't even know. I don't know what he, I know it's, I know the actor playing the Witcher is Superman. Why am I brain farting on his name? Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is the Witcher. I know that. I also know it was a video game that I believe my cousin loves. I could be mistaken about that, but I'm pretty sure Mr. Brew, if he's still in here, my cousin absolutely loves the Witcher games. Could be mistaken, but I'm, I, I, I'm, I feel like that's the game I would watch him play way, way back when. Was it The Witcher? It could be a different game. I could be mistaken, but I feel like it's The Witcher. Either way, I feel like he is some sort of supernatural guy, like a Van Helsing guy. or Like, literally, this is what I think The Witcher is, because this is what I think when I see The Witcher popping up on Netflix all the time. I feel like he's possibly a vampire or a supernatural guy that hunts like a Van Helsing, but I feel like he's good but he's like almost like a blade where he's like has to drink blood because he's a vampire, but he doesn't want to. So he like is for the greater good and trying to stop vampires, stuff like that. I don't know if I'm right or wrong about that, but that is literally my view of the Witcher because I see images sometimes of Henry Cavill and it looks like his veins are popping out and he's pale like he's a vampire or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. I'm just... For your entertainment, I'm giving you my opinion of what I think The Witcher is. Let us go back, because there is a lot of chat, guys, and I, I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying all the questions. I just feel like I am so far behind. But like I said, like the video, subscribe if you haven't. We will stay on here and play this game. I guarantee it. Can't complete the under... Oh, yeah, so they can't compete in the under-18 tournament, so I guess we might see them compete in the over-18. That's right, I did... Wait, I feel like I missed another... Oh, I did miss a couple. I'm gonna go back. Disney movies. Let's answer that question. Amar... Amar said, what are they gonna do? I thought about that at the end of Cobra Kai Season 4 that we just watched, because in that, they mentioned many times how they're all getting older. They mentioned their age like, I'm almost 18, or they mentioned birthdays. They were mentioned incidents with different people. So I was thinking that, what do you do when the under-18 tournament, they've made it a point to be like the All-Valley under-18 tournament. So like Amara said, is there an over-18 tournament? I'm assuming there is, because where do other people compete? And then you could even have Crease and Silver potentially fight? I mean, what are the limits? If it's over 18 tournament, could you have all the older dudes fight? Because I would love to see Crease and Silver go at it. Maybe Crease will come back and compete as a champion. And Crease will win at the age of 106 after he gets out of prison. I think that whole prison thing is going to wrap up fairly quickly. The way this show operates, I feel like he'll go to prison and they'll wrap it up in three episodes, have him meet Dutch. And then maybe Dutch is like, I'm on, uh, I'm on parole, not parole. What am I thinking of? Paroled? Yeah. Maybe Dutch will be like, I'm going to get paroled and Kreese will beat the rap. My guess is that either the evidence isn't going to stick because all you have is Stingray saying that Kreese beat the crap out of him. Kreese is obviously going to say, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about. And I feel like at some point, Stingray might feel some sort of loyalty to Crease, but I mean, not for nothing, guys. Crease made him look horribly stupid in front of everybody. Crease embarrassed him very badly in front of everyone. So not only is Silver more intimidating at this point and has money to basically do whatever Stingray wants, like Stingray could be like, give me a million dollars, and Silver could be like, done, you're my guy now, you're my boy. So... I mean, Stingray could easily stick with Silver, but I feel like they want us to like Stingray. And even though Crease is evil, Silver's so much more evil. So I can't help but think that they're going to eventually want us to want to like Stingray more. And I can't help but think that I will dislike Stingray, and others will too, if we feel like he wrongly accused Crease. Because here's my thing. 
even if you're evil and you're a scumbag and you're a crease. I want him to go down for the right reasons. I don't want him to go down because a meaner, more evil guy framed him. And now it's like, all right, Kreese is in jail. Yeah, he probably deserves to be in jail for all the shit he did in his life. But he went to jail because he got framed by an evil person, like a more evil person. So like, that doesn't fly. I don't like it. And I mean, I love Silver. I love the villain in Silver, I should say. Sometimes you just love to love the villain. And Silver's a great villain. He's a great, great villain. I think because a lot... Wait, 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 wait. You're, you pronounced it right. Okay, we got it right. I think because a lot of the cast will be prevented from competing in All Valley now, so they might leave maybe a spinoff Miguel and Hawk in college. See, you could do something like that. That's going back to what they were saying with the All Valley under or over 18. See, that is a good point. You could sideline the older kids, have a spinoff with them in college, like Saved by the Bell, the college years, have Cobra Kai, the college years, have all the kids over 18 in a spinoff. That's not a bad idea. I like that Ray Ray Gunner. Amar was also kind of going on the same thing. So I don't know who brought it up first. I'm pretty sure it was probably at the same time or close to, but either way, that makes sense. Because Kenny, and then you got Anthony LaRusso, you got all these younger kids who are now going to have rivalries. They could be the All Valley under 18, and you could do a spinoff like that. It would make sense, unless you could just combine the schools and you could do the under 18 and the over 18 at the same time. They've, am I, am I wrong? I don't remember them ever talking about the All Valley over 18. Has it ever been spoken of? Has an adult tournament in the movies or shows ever been spoken of? I don't recall that. I'm doing Wing Chun. We already talked about that. Broncos Country. I used to have this game. I have tons of Nintendo games, guys. When me and my brother were little, that we played so much NES, and I feel like we were rewarded like once a month with a Nintendo game as long as we did like our chores and stuff. My mom would take us to Toys R Us, and they had all those little papers, the yellow papers, hanging on the wall and you'd go over and if the paper was there that meant the game was in the storage unit in the back and you'd run up to the front and sometimes people wouldn't get the tickets and you'd think the game was in stock and it wasn't you'd go to the back and they'd be like nope sorry we don't have any copies and i'd be like but the paper's there the paper is there and they wouldn't have my game and it would break my heart that's how we used to do it it wasn't like when you go to like GameStop today and you go and it's like on the rack and you get it, they like literally had tickets and it was like Willy Wonka and you had the golden ticket if you could find your game. But it never, I mean, once in a blue moon, I wouldn't get that game. Once in a blue moon. I wonder if the Eagle fans, Eagle fan John's Daniel students because Johnny will be looking for Miguel. I wonder if the Eagle fan John... Daniel's students jo oh, joins my eyes are horrible it's literally I'm like what I wonder if the Eagle fan joins Daniel's students because Johnny will be lucky for Miguel oh I get what you're saying is Eagle fan gonna join hmm interesting maybe what well see People like Amar saying that Johnny is probably going to go with Robbie because I was going to say, what if because Johnny and Robbie are buddy buddy now? What if Johnny was like, Robbie, run Eagle Fang while I go look for Miguel? That would be a possibility if people didn't say that it's likely that Robbie is going with Johnny. If that's the case, then obviously that can't happen. But maybe Johnny will put in somebody to run it for him. Who else could he put in there that he could trust? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But it's, I mean, that's possible that Eagle Fang could just go to Miyagi-Do and they come with some sort of, I mean, it isn't going to be Miyagi-Do anymore. It, Chosen's going to basically be running a dojo under a new name because you can't have Miyagi-Do, you can't have Eagle Fang. That was the deal. So it would make sense that all Johnny students would go to Chosen's new dojo. What is it going to be called? Who knows? And they can't do something like Miyagi Fang or something. They've got to do something in my mind. I mean, they could do whatever they want because it's not my show. But in my mind, they got to do something that 
makes it their own. If you combine two dojo names that were forced out of the town, it, it looks like, all right, guys, we know what you did. Like, Chosen coming from Japan, it's easy that he could go like, yeah, I came here from Japan and I want to start a dojo. Obviously, they know it's bullshit, but it's easier done if you don't call it Miyagi Fang. Not to mention... Miyagi Fang it just doesn't do it for me. It's not the worst, but Miyagi Fang, I don't know, just doesn't do it for me. We have another donation. I want the show to end with Daniel and Johnny teaching together. Xander Brow again. Cheers again, my friend. Xander Brow is now over $20 in donations. He is a glorious man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I want to show to end with Daniel and Johnny teaching together. See, I feel like... I feel like we're already there. I feel like they pretty much resolved all that. If you watch the interview I watched with William Zapka and Ralph Macchio, they both pretty much say, we don't got to waste time on that anymore because we pretty much did everything we could do with the rivalry of Daniel and Johnny. So I feel like at this point, they might have their own little journeys to go on, but I feel like from here on, we're going to be buddy-buddy. Johnny and Daniel, I mean, they're going to obviously have their disagreements and they're probably going to fight and bicker. We all do. Everyone does. Married couples fight, relationships you fight, you fight with best friends all the time. So they're obviously going to have arguments. Maybe they'll backtrack in a season or two, but I feel like for now, at least for the next season or two, I feel like Daniel and Johnny are going to be buddies. I feel like they're going to be there for each other. Maybe like people said, maybe Johnny leaves with Robbie and they go do this little journey to go find Miguel. But I feel like Johnny and Daniel will stay relatively good to one another through that journey, at least until there's reason otherwise. I feel like we have so much else to worry about right now that Daniel and Johnny are, are going to stay good because we got Crease and Silver's rivalry, we got Kenny and Anthony LaRusso, I feel like is going to be a big deal. I feel like Anthony LaRusso is going to become a huge deal. He lost a ton of weight. I didn't realize it was the same actor till like the end of the season when I started realizing, holy crap, that is the same kid. He just grew a half a foot, lost like 50 pounds, and I feel like they're going to start training that dude and he's going to become a big deal. But cheers, Xander Brow again. You're getting another... Another another drink for you. All right. I think what I'm going to do here is... Oh my God, there's still a lot though. All right, let me catch up a little more. I mean, it's awesome that I can't catch up to the chat because that means that people care and I love when people care. I'm done... All right, let me let me let me find where I ended. I used to have this game. Yep. I wonder if the eagle we did that. Did you ever see the deleted scene of Johnny versus the Brazilian jujitsu jujitsu students? Ray Ray Gunner. Did you ever see the deleted scene of Johnny versus the Brazilian jujitsu students? I is it from Karate Kid or is that from Cobra Kai? Regardless, I don't think I have. Ray Ray Gunner, fill me in more. I've done reactions and short films before on Cobra Kai, so probably found my name through reactions or a lightsaber video. Xander Brow. I'll have to check it out. I feel like I've seen your name before. What shirt are you wearing? Jonathan Vu. It is Eagle Fang Karate, my beater version. I have the red t-shirt also, and I have the I have a red Eagle Fang shirt. Just like this. It's just not a, a wife beater. I know that's a horrible term for these shirts, but that's what I was told they're called growing up. It's a tank top. But my whole life, everyone called them wife beaters. Horrible name, but that's what I always called them. But Eagle Fang Karate, one of this, I have a red t-shirt of Eagle Fang that I cut the sleeves off. And then I have that red Cobra Kai shirt that you guys have seen in every reaction ever, probably. I feel like I've worn it in all of them that are on the YouTube channel. That isn't true about William. Ralph Martin is only known for K, K Films and Cobra Kai. That isn't true. Like William Back to School, just one of the guys. Ralph the Outsiders, My Cousin Vinny. That is true. 
William, that's right. William Zapka was in back to school with Rodney Dangerfield. I always forget that. In my mind, William Zapka has never been in anything else. But back to school, I absolutely love that movie. And I always forget he's the bully in it. Because honestly, back to school, to me, is all about Rodney Dangerfield. I think I just rewind through it and just watch Rodney Dangerfield. But William Zapka is great in it. He plays, he plays a great bully. He also, now that I think of it, it's not him. But you guys, like, it just dawned on me this second as I'm saying it. The dude, if you guys watch Creepshow 2, that, this is totally random, but it's back in the 80s. Creepshow 2, one of my guilty pleasure horror anthologies. I watch it all the time. I like it better than Creepshow 1, even though Creepshow 1 is a better movie and it's more scary and violent. Creepshow 2 is like cheesy horror at its best. The Raft episode of the anthology Creepshow 2. Tell me that dude doesn't look like William Zapka. The dude who gets eaten on the raft. The Jack dude who isn't the last one to die. The other dude. There's two girls and two guys on the raft episode. The first dude to die. I always felt like he was William Zapka, but it's not. I feel like he looks at him. Go check it out if you don't believe me. I feel like that dude looks like William Zapka. Martin Cove was in Rambo 2. He was also in Steel Justice, which if you guys haven't seen... There's a movie with Martin Cove. I've said this in other reactions before. About eight years ago, I want to say, maybe longer, maybe like 10 years ago, there is a movie called Steel Justice. And it's with Martin Cove and... <coughs> Sorry, I keep wheezing because I had to choke. I had a cough. So there is a... In that movie, Martin Cove is the lead, and he has this double-edged, not double-edged, it's a sword, where there's a sword on both ends, and you hold it like this, and there is an auction where Martin Cove was selling off all his personal belongings, like he needed money or something, I don't know, but Martin Cove had an auction, a private auction, and was selling off all his personal memorabilia that he saved over the years. And he was selling this sword, this like double-sided sword from this movie Raw Steel or Steel Justice. You, I can't find this movie anywhere. You rarely can find it. Maybe now with Tubi and everything, it's on something. If it's on anything, it's on Tubi because Tubi is the type of like streaming service that would have something like this. It was cheesy 80s action, greatness, Martin Cove. And he was auctioning off this sword and I was the high bidder at like $800. And I didn't meet the max bid. So literally the auction guy was like, we're going to put you in contact with Martin Cove and you could talk directly to him. And I didn't speak with him physically, but I literally through email, I mean, it could have been anybody, but it was the guy said, you're going to talk. This is Martin Cove's personal email. He now has possession of the sword again because the auction didn't meet the max bid. And I was email emailing with Martin Cove over buying a sword from a movie from the eighties. And we couldn't agree on a price, and it broke my heart. I almost was, like, thinking maybe I should just agree to any price just because I am probably dealing personally with Martin Cove, and that in itself is worth the value of whatever he wanted. I think he wanted, like, $2,000, and I think I was like, I'll go to, like, 1200 or something like that, and that was it. We, like, didn't come to an agreement. And I thought about it for the rest of my life. I almost could have owned the sword from the movie that Martin Cove himself owned and was selling. Whatever happened to it, I don't know. Maybe he still owns it. Maybe he auctioned it later. All I know is I don't own it, and it breaks my heart, because you gotta remember, this was like eight to ten years ago when all this happened, so Cobra Kai wasn't even like a thought at that point. So I'm thinking like, the, like who, why do I even want this sword? I loved it, and I loved Martin Cove because of Karate Kid and everything, but in my head I'm thinking, I'm gonna like display this, and people are gonna be like, whoa, Who's Martin Cove? What is Steel Justice? And now it probably would be like, people would probably recognize it, obviously. <clears throat> I keep wheezing. I have to drink my coffee. I want to drink my coffee now because I totally forgot. It's almost 10 o'clock. And the point of me having that whole cup of coffee was so that I was energized. And if I drink it any later... I'm going to have a shit ton of energy at like 12 o'clock at night. But guys, we're catching up in the chat. I apologize if you guys wanted to watch the Karate Kid game, but there's so many questions. We're having fun here with chats. We will eventually play it, but 
let's go through. What have I missed here? Ba 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 ba. Martin Cove Rambo Part Two. We saw that. Mikey P. Hey, I'm from Jersey. I live in Orlando now. Xander Brow lives in Orlando now. Where from Jersey were you? Where in Jersey were you from, Xander? Why, thank you. Please subscribe. LOL. Xander, I will definitely check you out after. Can you speak Japanese, please? I do not know Japanese, my friend. I just know that every time Chosen pops up, he goes like, what did he say when he saw Daniel? He's like, hey, uh, I don't know. That's that's a horrible that he didn't say that at all. By the way, when you mention Miguel gained weight, it's because he's going to be Blue Beetle. And they asked him to get more buff. He has already done two suit fittings, he said in an interview. Awesome. Obeyed W. If I'm saying that right, Obeyed W. I hope I'm saying that right. That makes sense. I said earlier Blue Beetle was a thing on the horizon. I don't know much about that. I only, I only, I only knew that because of an interview I saw recently that someone else spoke something. But guys, slap a like on the channel. We're doing well. We've had 30 plus in the chat for pretty much 90% of this. Like it. Subscribe if you haven't. At some point, we're going to get into the video game. But right now, we've been rolling for over an hour. And we just haven't been able to get to it because we have endless questions and I dig it. Ben, loving your reactions. Thank you, Xander. Also, you probably found my name. Blah, blah. I already saw that. Season four was probably the worst season. And I'm not even kidding. College workouts. I have heard some people think it's the best. I don't think it's the best. I wouldn't say season four is the best. I would say it's... Somewhere, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say it's the worst. I don't know though. See, when people were telling me like season four might be the best season, and I'm like, it might be, but I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like they're all good. I don't know if you're, I, I'm assuming you still liked season four. Like, I, I'm assuming just because you think it's the worst, I still think all four seasons were great. You could, in my mind, you could interchange most of them, but if I had to pick. I, I don't know. Like, season... The the thing that sucks is season one is the only season you guys can't see me... My, 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 my. Season one is the only one? Or did I not watch season two either? I feel like I reacted to season two on the channel. I just know I didn't react to season one, so you guys can't see it. But I don't know if I had to pick a favorite season. I don't know. Season three was great. It hit me with all the nostalgia. I feel like season one was great because I just didn't expect such a great show. Season two, I was already like, all right, I know this show's great. And they didn't disappoint. But season three, bringing in Chosen and connecting the, the little girl. And I don't know. I feel like season three just touched me in all the right spots with nostalgia. What is your guys? What are your guys' favorite seasons? Because I feel like three, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I think what would have been dope and probably would have made Johnny and Daniel come along is if they did actually fight and the baseball and the baseball diamond and lose to Cobra Kai because of them knowing Miyagi Mason Perez I think what would have been dope and probably would have made Johnny and Daniel come along is if they did actually fight and the baseball oh I get what you're saying if, if they actually fought like when they were supposed to fight and they actually went and fought well, they did actually fight. Are you talking about, oh, earlier? But overall, a good season. Hype for season five. I don't know if I'm completely understanding. Baseball Diamond. They were supposed to fight. They did fight in the dojo or on the thing. When me... See, Daniel used chosen scroll technique against Johnny. I thought that was really dirty play. I, I feel like I'm confused slightly, but we'll move on and, and go back to that. Would you rather go Disney World in Christmas time or Disney World during Halloween? I would have to say probably Halloween, honestly, because Christmas time, I want to be home for the holidays and stuff like that. I do family stuff. Halloween, one of my favorite holidays ever, and we don't have parties or anything with family, so it would be convenient. So and uh, Halloween... It's probably my second favorite holiday next to Christmas. But Christmas, to me, is more family. Where Halloween, I just go and party and drink and have fun. So Halloween would be probably a better Disney trip. By the way, when you mentioned Miguel Gainway, blah, blah, I saw that. Finally uploading some new Cobra Kai reactions. You hyped me up. Xander Brow, gotta check him out. The Witcher is basically a gray Jedi. A gray Jedi. I want a Sensei tournament. So... 
The, I mean, I've, I, the funny thing with The Witcher is I never watched season one because I'm like, I'm going to react to it at some point. And my plan originally was to react to it before season two dropped. Then so many shows came out and my channel got suspended for like a month and a half back in October. So totally delayed a lot of what I was supposed to do. And, and, and I just didn't do a bunch of things I was going to do because I just couldn't. And then by the time I caught up, I was like, all right, let me just regroup. I want a sensei tournament. That would be like, see, that's what I was saying. There should be a sensei tournament. Have crease and silver and all these dudes. I would dig it. Oh my God. I feel like I'm so far behind in the chat. Oh my God. All right. We, we got to catch up. I'm going to rapid fire the chat guys, just because we're an hour and a half in and I do want to play some of the games. So we're going to rapid fire the chat. We got sub view masters. Oh my God, Roland 666 I haven't seen you in forever. I cannot, I, I always do this to you. I can't remember if it's Roland, because I had a friend named Roland in high school. But I don't know if, I can't remember if it's Roland 666 or Roland, but I remember you from live chats. Probably haven't seen you in a while, but I definitely remember you, dude. What's up, my man? You all think that was the last cameo for Aisha? I don't think so. I think Aisha's coming back. If Miguel and Eli continued to fight and Miguel wasn't injured, who would have won? My money is on my money is on Miguel. If Miguel and Eli kept fighting, but who would win between Miguel and Robbie? If I had to go Miguel and Eli, I honestly think Eli. I think Miguel only won last year because I feel like I almost feel like Miguel just progr progressed much faster than everybody else. But I feel like Eli is the more uh, superior fighter. As far as Miguel and Robbie, I think Robbie. I think Miguel at this point, I mean, the show might make him the greater fighter and the better fighter. But I feel like Eli and Robbie, the fight between Eli and Robbie, I think was one of the best looking fights in the entire show. Choreograph wise, the 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 solid movements, everything. Like even when they hit one another, it looked believable. So that might be the best, if not one of the best choreographed fights. When Robbie was like doing the fake out where he like goes like this and jabs the punch and then had the gi unbuckled and he was like, the gi was like moving so fast when he was like swept back. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's hard for me to do it from the chair, but everything that happened in that fight looked amazing. So I feel like Robbie though, I, I mean, I, I obviously I'm wrong because Eli beat him. But I feel like Robbie got in his own head. I feel like Robbie got in his own head and Hawk just happened to be at a high point in his life. Like Hawk jumped in, the Hawk sound went, he's he's got like everything in Hawk's life is going good right now. And Robbie still hadn't worked things out with his dad yet at that point. So I feel like Robbie was all messed up in the head. He let it get the best of him. Hawk won. Not saying anything bad about Hawk. I love Hawk. Hawk is probably my favorite. Hawk is one of my favorite. I definitely like Hawk better than Robbie, even though I still enjoy Robbie. Robbie's up there too. But I would have to say if Robbie didn't get inside his own head and was completely at peace with himself, I think that Robbie would have prevailed. And I think Robbie is the best looking fighter in the show, the most deserving fighter in the show. I also feel like he's got the most training and the best training of anyone in the show. I feel like everyone has kind of like come and gone from depression and stuff. But even when Robbie is depressed, it almost like it pushed him harder and made him fight stronger. Whereas like Hawk, when he was down and out, he's like, I'm done with all this. And he's playing at home with his, what was it, Dungeon Lord or whatever the heck the game was called. And Dimitri had to come in and kind of get his ass off the couch and be like, dude, man up. So I feel like Robbie doesn't need that. I talked a lot in my reactions about self-motivation. I'm one of these dudes that you don't have to motivate. You give me a goal or you tell me like, this is what you need to do. And I set a goal for myself. I will get to that goal by myself. I will wake up at like four in the morning and jog 20 miles if I have to and work out in the gym for three or four hours a day. I can motivate myself and push myself beyond my limits whenever I need to. I've done it my whole life with martial arts and lifting weights and stuff like that. I am a self-motivated man. Robbie is like that. I feel like when Robbie is down and out, like whenever I get depressed or sad or pissed off, I go lift weights. I make myself productive. I don't go bury myself in a bottle and get sad and, and cry about my problems. Like, I'm not saying that's a horrible thing if you do, but it, it's not a good thing 
it's like, a, like that's negative and you're just going to make things worse. So whenever I feel bad and shit gets me down, I just become more productive. I do more YouTube. I go work out more. I, I do things that will make my life better in the long run. Like, like what good is it like feeling all down and out and burying yourself in a bottle and then the next day shit's just going to be worse. Make it so that the next day the light shines upon thee. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. But like the video, guys. Subscribe and like. We're getting through these comments. There's just so much to talk about. The plan is that the series to run for six seasons. This is Roland 666. Or Roland. I apologize again, my friend. But like I said, I think it's Roland. But I had a friend named Rollin. So it always throws me off. Have a feeling season five will end with Kreese teaming up with the John and Danny with John and Danny to take down Cobra Kai. I could see that happening, but I feel like, did you say season will end? Season five will end that way. It's possible. If you're telling me they have a plan for six seasons, then that's possible. If we go beyond six seasons, they might hold off till season six, till the Kreese turnaround. The kid who plays Miguel is playing Blue Beetle in the movie. We talked about that. Let's rewatch the entire franchise and hunt for clues. For an 18 plus tournament, I'm down. <laughs> Love it. I might do that. Johnny versus the Cartel Rambo 5 style next year. Would love that if it just got dark violence, like an R rated season of violent craziness, but it's only 18 plus. Only, only the adult kids can join. You know, Daniel, Daniel Wynn in Karate Kid was highly controversial. Yes, because of the crane kick. Yes. Highly controversial win by Danny. I always sided with Johnny. It was one of those things where when they actually made Cobra Kai and they had that whole angle where Johnny's like, he illegally hit me and stole my girlfriend. Well, um, me and my brother, whoever I was watching it with, when season one dropped and that whole thing with Johnny came out, I was like, oh my God, we have literally had debates like this our whole lives. And I know other people have too. They've talked about it in movies and it's been, it's, I, I'm pretty sure how I met your mother did a whole thing, how Neil Patrick Harris, Barney, his character Barney in How I Met Your Mother. I'm almost positive they did a whole like thing on how William Zapka was wrongly like accused of being the villain of all that. And he was Barney's best man at his wedding. Welp, I gotta go, y'all. Uploading my reactions before work. Great stream. Xander Brow, thank you so much, my man. Go check out Xander Brow, guys. Donated a lot this stream. Amar, you know Daniel competing in the All Valley is in part three didn't make sense, say. Oh, oh my God, I literally thought you were making a joke, but it is an apostrophe. Makes sense. He was already 18 at the time. Remember when he bought the Bonsai Tree Store? He 18 right before the tourney. Hey, I actually never noticed that. I was actually thinking about that when I... When, I don't, I never focused on the under 18 until the most current season of Cobra Kai. So when I heard the under 18, I started thinking like, oh, all these kids are going to start getting older and that's not going to work anymore. But I never thought of the movies, how old they were then. Like Mar Mike Barnes, not for nothing. You're telling me Mike Barnes was under 18? Mike Barnes was already like an established fighter. He was famous like throughout the world at that point, wasn't he? I feel like Mike Barnes was like super famous at that point. Was he 18? Because that was probably illegal in itself. But good point, Amir. You should watch some of the recent cast videos from the Ver Vanity Vanity Fair and Teen Vogue. They are some very funny moments and theories. I'll check that out. That was from OBW. Ray Ray Gunner. Don't even know the Daniel that Daniel had a spot in the finals in KK3. Love how they brought it up this season. Didn't even know, don't even know why Daniel had a spot in the finals. Love how they brought it up in the season. It's on YouTube from Cobra Kai. Didn't Daniel have a spot because he was the previous champion? So he automatically got a spot in the tournament. Wasn't that how it happened? I feel like that's how it happened. Unless I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. I feel like, da oh my God, I've been sitting in the same position so long. I just like pulled a muscle in my, uh, I'm just going to sit up for a second. Ooh, I just got to stretch a bit. I was like not realizing how I didn't move for like three years. All right. Oh, oh, like the video, guys. Subscribe while I adjust myself and stretch. Oh. 
I, we're almost caught up. We're almost caught up, and then we're going to see how good I do at this game. It's going to be pretty funny at this point, because now I'm a couple shots deep, and I haven't played it. And like I said, I remember it being extremely difficult when I was younger. It's on YouTube from Cobra Kai. Don't even know why Daniel had a spot in the finals in Karate Kid 3. Love how they brought it up this season. Had to do when... Had to do when Johnny was promoting his dojo back in season one and encountered some jujitsu students. No fighting, but funny interaction. So Ray Ray Gunner is talking about earlier, he said there is a cut scene where Johnny fights a bunch of Brazilian jujitsu guys. I have not seen that, I don't believe. It's possible I'd seen it in the past and forgot. I'll have to check it out, but Ray Ray Gunner's saying it's on YouTube. I'm assuming I just type in Johnny, Brazilian jujitsu fighting or something like that. I'll check it out. Good to know. Good to know. Ralph Macchio was in the HBO series The Deuce. I feel like someone told me that. A lot of people in the Wire reactions told me to watch The Deuce. I feel like that's where I know Rollin666 from, even though I keep switching it to Rollin and Rollin. And I don't even know how you... Rollin? Rollin. Rollin. This is how the best way. If your name is Rollin, type Roll. Otherwise, I'll think it's Rollin, because if it's Rollin, I will know. But if it's Rollin, type Roll, and then I'll know, and I'll stop guessing and pronouncing your name horribly wrong 500 times. Silas Beard. What is up, Silas? Silas has been around for a good a good while, not just in this chat. I mean, Silas has been around since the beginning of this chat, but Silas is in most of the live streams. I enjoy it. Is the sword like the one Thanos had? Isn't Rambo... The Rocky dude? Yes. Rambo is the Rocky dude. Sylvester Stallone. And in Rambo, Martin Cove was. So Martin Cove has been in many good 80s action movies, but Martin Cove was in Rambo 2. And the sword that I almost bought was kind of like the one Thanos had, but smaller. Good, good call, Silas. It was no joke, like maybe like this big. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to see on the camera because there's like a five second delay. But the sword was about this big. Yeah, like this, the extent, but it was basically a miniature version of Thanos' sword. Go check out Steel Justice. Type in Steel Justice Martin Cove sword, and you'll see. I almost bought it, and Martin Cove probably owns it now, and it's probably worth so much more money. OBW. Tam, I can't see. Tamlin Tamita Kumiko will play Suki's mother in the live-action Avatar TV show. Oh, Kumiko. All right, Kumiko from Karate... I'm from Cobra Kai. Suki's mother in live-action Avatar. That's kind of cool. So the character that played... The actress who played Kumiko in Cobra Kai is playing Suki's mother in the live-action Avatar. When is that coming out, the live-action Avatar? I've heard very little about it. I just know some of the people that are casted. Salute. We got Jose Carlos Gambara Jr. If I'm pretty sure I said that right. Jose Carlos Gambara Jr. Bite like an eagle. I hope I said your name right. I That is a long name and I enjoy it. That is, that is a, a, a cool name. Grandmaster Sub-Zero Eagle Sound. Ha, ah, Mr. Hawk. I love the hawk sound. The hawk sounds great. Okay, let's get serious. What's your favorite? What do we got here? Ali, Kumiko, Jessica, Amanda. A oh, Ali. I was like, Ali? Who the heck's... Literally, I read Ali, and I was thinking of Squid Game. I'm like, the only Ali I know is Muhammad Ali, and most recently, the Ali from Squid Game, which I won't talk about because spoilers, but that's what I was thinking of. But if I had to pick, let's get serious. Ray Ray Gunner, who's your favorite? Ali, Kumiko, Jess, or Amanda? I'd have to go Ali. Uh, I'd have to go Ali, man. Elizabeth Shue is just, she just wins because I'm, I, I by default. Adventures in Babysitting, Karate Kid, and Back to the Future, three of my all-time favorite 80s movies. She could literally be the biggest ass ever and I would still want Allie just because of my childhood. Adventures in Babysitting, I've watched a thousand times. Back to the Future, one of my top ten movies of all time. Karate Kid, 
one of my favorite franchises of all time. Like, I, I can't I, I can't go against Elizabeth Shue. If it wasn't for Elizabeth Shue, I don't know. Kumiko is pretty awesome. I mean, I think Daniel missed out. Like, nothing against Amanda and nothing against Jessica. Nothing against them, but I just feel like whom I mean, maybe the nostalgia in me, because I'm also going with the two people that are from the original series, so I don't know. Maybe it's the nostalgia or the... I'm just biased, but... <coughs> Ow. All right, guys, I think we're almost... Uh, no, we still got a lot. We're almost caught up to me not having to scroll anymore, I think. No, no, we have a lot. Damn it. Oh my god, I thought we were almost there again. We still have a lot. All right. Gonna have to run through again, like I said. Season four. Let me, I don't even know where we finished at this point. Oh my god, there's so much chat. All right, we're right here. All right. Whew. Guys, we're gonna take another drink break. Like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. We're doing good here. We're about an hour and a half in, over an hour and a half in, and I haven't even clicked the game yet. Do you guys want me to keep going with the chat, or should I play some game and go back to the chat? I'm just afraid if I play some of the game, I'm never going to catch up to the chat. But I also am kind of curious to play the game. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think, but I won't ever know because I can't catch up to the chat. So let's see. We're going to rush through real quick. Do you think Tori will take Crease out of prison? Do you think Tori will take Crease out of prison? I think Crease. I said this earlier, but I think Crease isn't going to be in prison long. I think they're going to realize that the bogus charges don't stick or Stingray is going to feel bad. I have a feeling that's not going to last long. This show moves fast, and I feel like they're going to be done with that quickly. I think Chosen said Yosh. Yes, that's what he said. I was trying to think. Ray Ray Gunner, awesome. I was like, what the hell did Chosen say? Yosh. Yes. Something like cool. I'm not sure, though. I think it's tied for best. Jerm Jermaine Braley? Braley. Jermaine Braley. Sorry, guys. My eyes are bad. I got to lean in. Jermaine Braley, I think it's tied for best. I'm assuming you mean the season. I wouldn't disagree. I, I It's hard to, to put him in order. It's hard. Season two is probably the best. Season one is the worst. Season three and four is in the middle somewhere. See, season one is probably the worst, but it also... It's like I always give shows credit when they... It's like the first season, they have so much they have to establish and build in order to have a following that I always give them a little, like, leeway in season one. It still doesn't make it right or wrong that it's not a better season, I guess. But I always feel like in season one, you got to do so much building of things you normally wouldn't have to do in other seasons. Like, for people that don't follow the Cobra Kai fran or people that didn't know the, the movies. Like, say you've never watched a Karate Kid movie. They had to throw a lot of stuff in there to explain Johnny and Daniel to you so that you could just jump into this without knowing anything. Or even if you did know the Karate Kid franchise, the last movie came out 30 plus years ago. And that's if you count the next Karate Kid that came out 35 plus years ago. And that's a movie that most people are like, whoa. And I just reacted to it. It wasn't that bad. It was ridiculous, but I, I it was cheesy good fun. Season four was dope. Mikal Riggins. Season four was awesome. Jose Carlos. Season four had its own strengths. For example, the drama was bigger. My favorite was three. Nostalgia returning. Yeah, I, I honestly think three was my favorite. As I said, it also another iconic role for Martin Cove was on the hit TV show Cagney and Lacey. See, I've, I know Cagney and Lacey, Mikey P., I know it, but I've never seen it. So I did not know he was part of that. Interesting. Season four hit the spot. That's Gutmart Gam Games. Gutmart Games. Season four hit the spot. A lot of people like it season four. I would probably say three was my favorite. Two and four. Uh, two might be my second. And then four and one are kind I, I don't know. Honestly, one might actually be the worst. I feel bad saying that because it's what established greatness. But honestly, the other seasons were so good and I love season one. There's nothing against season one. But if I had to rank it, I would probably say three, two, four, one. Three, two, four, one, maybe. Maybe three, two, yeah, I don't know. And I don't hate any of them. I don't dislike any of them. They're all great. Hollow F, 
Oh my god. Hollow FRM BX Season 3 Faux Show. Don't know how I pronounce your name, but Hollow Formida BX. I don't know. I'm just making things up. Abbas Cosme. What did you think of Dimitri throwing Robbie in his match with him and my favorite... With him and my favorite season is four. Throwing Robbie in his match. Dimitri did very well. I can't help but think that every season has had one of the people we've known since season one win a major fight. And Dimitri has little by little gotten better and better. So I can't help but think that next season is Dimitri's season. I feel like next season, Dimitri's going to have some epic win that kind of like solidifies his greatness to himself. Because he's still very, like, unsure of himself, let's say. He's way better than he used to be. He obviously knows he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your average dude. But he still doubts himself. And I feel like he needs one major win under his belt. Although he did... I mean, he's held his own decently against some formidable foes. But I feel like dimitri has got some huge win on the horizon. Uh, bup, 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 bup. I feel like season four, I love all four seasons for specific reasons. Gutmart Games, I feel the same way. Paper is the name of this person. I feel like season four was a more character-driven season using its time to build everything up for season five, assuming that it's the final season. Highly doubt it's the final season. The fact that it's already wrapped and it did so successful and they've been doing so successful, I can't imagine they'd wrap on five Gotta be at least six. I think so. I forget who it was, but somebody said they planned for six. I think it was Roland, but I don't know. I can't help but think there's going to be at least seven or eight seasons. I loved all bop, bop, bop. Five will not be the final season. I agree. Good answer, Ray Ray Gunner. I wish the series had about 10 seasons. I would watch forever. Honestly, as long as you keep it on the consistency it's been. I mean, at some point it might start sucking, but... I have hope, and the writers are great. I, I watch it as long as they want it to go. Let me clarify. I'm talking about when the students ran into each other at the drive-in. Okay. If the students fought and lose to Cobra Kai, they're on the dot. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mason, I get you now. I, I'm like, in my head, I'm envisioning what you're saying, but I'm confusing it with the Daniel and the Johnny thing. So I got it. After the drive-in, when they all met up, and they were all supposed to go to the diamond and then the sprinklers went off. Yes, I agree. Gut Mart Games. Season 1 set up all characters and the main plot. Season 2 got interesting and made the plot bigger. Season 3 brought nostalgia and Season 4 was the perfect climax season. Agreed. Like I said, Season 1 has to set up. So by default, Season 1 is going to be less exciting because you got to do more building. If you're more into story building and dialogue, you might like Season 1 more. But if you're already a Karate Kid fan, I feel like season one is just going to be a lot of filler that you probably didn't need. But I still enjoyed season one immensely. It would have made Johnny and Daniel come together sooner. I agree, Mason. That was what we're talking about with the diamond, with the kids fighting after the drive through It's, uh, I'm not sure Miguel is 100%. I agree. Miguel is not 100%. Something might be wrong. The fact that Miguel had what he had, I mean... We had some serious rehab with Miguel back in season two. Now he tweaks himself on a kick he did for himself. I can't help but assume that there might be something very wrong with Miguel. Maybe they'll be like, dude, like maybe it'll be like one of those things they do it many times in action movies and sports related movies. Maybe they're going to do some x-rays like a Rocky thing and be like, you could never fight again. You have something that's pushing on your spinal cord and God forbid you get kicked the wrong way or you twist and you do this, you'll, you'll die. That's what happens. It happened in Rocky. It happens in most fighting shows where you stretch beyond the third or fourth film or the season. So it's very possible one of our heroes or one of our fighters gets benched because of like future injuries paralyzing them or something. I mean, it's, I agree that it's, it might not be a coincidence that Miguel has been injured at the end of two seasons now. And he did walk off and say he was okay. But I said in my reaction, I don't believe it. He was not. Miguel was not 100% physically and mentally correct. He was not. I agree with all that. We're talking about it now. Robbie wasn't fully focused either. Correct. I also agreed with that earlier. I said, Robbie was not 
right in his head for himself. But if he was, he would beat both them. I would agree. Wait, Gutmart Games. He was not. So Gutmart is, I think Gutmart is saying that Miguel would win if he was right. I think Robbie would win if both were right. Maybe not Robbie. Maybe not Robbie. Okay, so you're saying you think Miguel would win if both were at 100%. I still think Robbie would win at 100%. He's got better size, better technique, stronger. He it wasn't he wasn't getting tired. I said the only thing you got against a bigger, more muscular fighter is usually they get winded faster, but Robbie was not getting winded. So, in my opinion, Robbie would probably have won even if both were at 100%. Silas Beard, the Rocky dude element? You mean Sylvester Stallone? Yes. Wrong answer. Eli versus Miguel is a win for Miguel. Even when he was a super ego mode, Miguel washed him. And Miguel's injured if he was complete and he was training and his training wasn't put on pause or slowed. Silas, I probably would agree. If Miguel was 100% and he kept his training on par, yes, you're probably right. But based on everything, I think that's the problem. I think Miguel might never be 100% again with that injury. I mean, the dude re-injured himself on his own technique. So in my opinion, if someone hits him or, or attacks him the wrong way, I mean, the dude is, is fragile. And if the dude rehabbed himself and then couldn't even get through the next tournament, I mean, the dude, you could say that, well, he wasn't training because he was rehabbing. And if he didn't train that whole time and rehabbed and he still injured himself, I mean, at that age, if you can't rehab yourself in a year, yeah, things aren't looking too good. I mean, look at sports guys. Granted, they have money and the greatest doctors on earth working with them, but they rehab in like months and some injuries you can't rehab. And at his age, I don't know, like that's too big moments in tournaments in a matter of four seasons. So not too good for Miguel. I think Miguel is the new karate kid, or at least he was. I agree with that. Hawk won because he was more focused on the fight than Robbie. I agree with that. Mikey. Yeah, we're agreeing with Mikey P about Sylvester Stallone. Robbie wasn't fully focused because of Kenny beating up Anthony too. That is true also. I didn't even think of that. You're right. Robbie was dealing with his own shit and then also had to deal with the fact that he turned Kenny into a monster. I totally forgot about that. Like, I didn't back when it happened, but like, we're, yeah, I forgot to mention that is a big factor. If we're being fair, Miguel and Robbie were evenly trading blows in the prom fights and Miguel was doing good against Eli even landed the first hit. Yeah, no, I, I put it this way. All of our top fighters are pretty equal. I mean, it's like very subtle things that'll give them the edge. I feel like in my case though, in my opinion, the fact that they're also evenly match, the edge goes to Robbie because of technique and size. And I know size doesn't matter, but when you're all even in my mind, it does matter. Size matters when, like, if you're all even and then one guy has 20 more pounds of muscle and everything else in my mind is even, then I'm going to give it to the 20 pounds of muscle guy because now you got strength, so you got an edge. But like we said, Robbie was in his own head and I don't know. I mean, it's all up for debate and obviously no one's right or wrong. I'm not right. You're not right. I mean, it's all opinion. I mean, one of us is right, but we don't know who it is. Bop, 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 bop. What are we, where are we at? Miguel, Hawk, and Robbie both. I want to see how far. All right. we. I feel like we're getting there, but I feel like we still have a lot. Blah, blah, blah. We'll have to see. I would love to see us. I, I like, I, I went, every time I scroll down, I feel like we're not that far. And then I scroll back up and I'm like, oh my God, there's like 500 things. All right. But Miguel, but Eli and Miguel are probably the most equal opponents we're going to get. Yes, I would agree with that. I think Eli and Miguel are the most equal, but I feel like Robbie is a step above both of them. That's my opinion. That's, uh, But I feel like Miguel and Eli are much closer. They're probably the two closest of any fighters in the show. But I think Robbie's a step above. I think Tori is by far the best girl fighter, regardless of what Sam did this episode, even though Sam should have won and the ref fixed it. I feel like Tori was in her own head and she like Robbie lost based on that or won because of the refs, but she would have lost if 
run fairly because she got in her own head. So besides that, though, Tori technically is by far the best fighter. I've spoken the way I feel about Sam, and I'm not trying to be mean. It's just technically she's gotten much better. And I feel like the show, I said this in my reactions, I feel like the show masks the bad qualities of her fighting by putting her on defense and using great editing. And she has gained a lot of skill as a fighter. And it's almost unnoticeable at this point that, I mean, honestly, this season, I had no problems with her. I feel like the editing helps a lot, and I feel like they did do a great job of training her. But Tori has looked so technical since the beginning, like Robbie, that it's hard for me to not think that Tori and Robbie are the best girl and guy fighter in the show. Tori is great. I, the girl who plays her, I can't remember the actress's name. But Tori, one of my favorites on the show. Definitely my favorite girl. But Devin Lee, I don't know what it is about Devin Lee. I like her cockiness. I like that she's tiny and skinny, but has she doesn't take crap. Devin Lee is just like this like 100 pounds soaking wet girl, probably not even 100 pounds. And she's just like, I don't take crap in the debate. She like rips that book in half and like tells it like it is. I really think I'm going to enjoy Devin Lee. And she didn't even care when she lost in the end. I'm like, dude, you shouldn't feel bad. And before I could even finish, she's like, I don't feel bad. I've been training for six weeks and I almost built the greatest girl fighter. Like I, she almost beat Tori. I mean, hey, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of Devin Lee. Devin Lee is a, is a favorite of mine. But let's run through the chat. I, I keep stopping and going too long. Eli deserved to win, though fighting in a... Oh, wait. What? Robbie wasn't fully focused. Eli deserved to win, though fighting in a mental game as much as a physical one. And Robbie slipping up only meant Eli was the better fighter that day. True. Ray Ray Gunner is correct. I say this many times myself. You can't use being in your own head as an excuse. You can't lose the Super Bowl and said... I should have won the Super Bowl. I was just inside my own head. Winning is winning. So for whatever reason, Eli was the better man that day and Eli won. So you can make all the excuses under the sun. And in the end, hey, for whatever reason, Eli was the better man that day. Last season, Eli was all sorts of screwed up. So Eli's had his day. I mean, Eli was screwed up in this season. He, he, he almost didn't come back. He went back to Eli. The Binary Brothers had to come out in full effect. Dimitri swung him. See, even if Dimitri isn't the greatest fighter, Dimitri got the greatest fighter to come back and win the All-Valley. If you think about it like that, Dimitri, without Dimitri, Eli might not have come back. So Dimitri, in effect, had a huge outcome on everything. If I was being fair, blah, 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 we already read that. Miguel Hawk and... Miguel, Hawk, and Robbie both are all are great fighters. Yes, they're all great fighters. Agreed. Bop, 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 bop. I'm just trying to see. And he still almost beat Hawk. Hawk lost because his back hit messed up during the special kick. But see, it goes back to what we were saying before. If you, like, I always thought if you can get knocked out of a fight by injuring yourself, like... Ken Griffey Jr. was one of these baseball players that most people know about. Ken Griffey Jr., I grew up with him, amazing baseball player. Dude was injured all the time. Probably could have broke so many more records than he already broke, but he was injured all the time. And it's one of those things everyone was always like, dude, if this guy could just stay healthy, he would be like a guaranteed Hall of Famer. I mean, he is a Hall of Famer, but he would have so many records, blah, blah, blah. But the fact remains, the dude couldn't stay healthy. He kept getting injured. And I feel like Miguel is going to be that kind of athlete in this. I feel like they've already done it twice in four seasons. I can't help but think if they're going to do it to somebody, they're going to make Miguel the, the guy that just can't rehab properly and he's always going to get messed up and that's his excuse. But maybe they're not. Maybe they can't. I don't know. Bum, 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 bum. Eli isn't the better. Eli isn't the better. His head wasn't in it because he felt guilty for Kenny beating up Anthony. Eli isn't the better. His head. I mean, we're talking about Robbie not being in it. I agree with that. I think Robbie, if it, but like we said, uh, any given Sunday, it's any given Sunday, anything could happen. And in that circumstance, Robbie's head wasn't in it. He lost. But I agree. If Robbie is at 100%, I think he would have. Stingray got curb stomped this season. It honestly upset me. Honestly, that was dark. And the fact that Stingray sided with Silver after that, like, that was a brutal beating. 
And Stingray didn't sign up for that till after the beating was done. And then Stingray still sided with Silver because he wants so badly to be accepted that he let that go on. Like, that's crazy. But I did feel bad, too. It was it was made me sick to my stomach. Like, oh, my God, they beat him that bad. But then when I realized what he did, I'm like, eh. Johnny is thinking of changing the name from Eagle Fang to Eagle Wang. Eagle Doe not have fangs, but they f definitely do have f wangs. Stink Bug. Obviously a joke, I'm assuming, but I like it. Eagle Wangs. They don't have fangs, but they definitely have wangs. Was that like said in a joke in an interview or something? I can't imagine, but that is pretty funny. I would love to see a scene of Miguel and Robbie fighting together in Mexico like the scene in Daniel. I mean, that would be cool. You might get that. Maybe there's some interaction like that before they buddy up and they come back. That I could see happening. We'll have to see. E Eagle Wang isn't a badass name. Yeah, Eagle Wang is funny, but it's, it's not very badass. Unless you beat... See, it would be badass if you were undefeated. Like, no one could beat you. And ten years later, who's going to make fun of Eagle Wang when you're undefeated and destroy all your foes like that? I don't know how I missed some of these and then read some of these. Like, I, here, I'm up to the comment now with Suki's mother. For some reason, I got to that and I missed others. It wasn't an illegal kick, Johnny and the Cobra Kai's... Wait, it wasn't an illegal kick. Johnny and the Cobras also kicked everyone in the face. I mean, yeah, everyone did illegal stuff all the time. But I guess people are saying they were punished for the most part and Daniel won on an illegal move. Images from the recording of season five were leaked, and apparently Johnny and Robbie will go after Miguel. That's what people said earlier, Jose. I saw leaked photos of Miguel with many people, one of which they thought might be or is the father. But I didn't see pictures with Johnny and Robbie. It's very possible, and I'm assuming you guys are correct. It also could just be a uh, mislead. Maybe they're misleading. Because I've seen a lot of things like this in other shows. Walking Dead did it. Other shows have done it where they mislead you by having people on the set. But also it's happened where people are on the set and, and it's real. Like, I feel like Mandalorian had a leak with Luke Skywalker and stuff like that. So it's very possible. Terry Silver is in the chat. Asa! I really hope it's the real Terry Silver. Hope you're still there. What... Viewmasters, what are your most what are you most excited for for season five? Season five, most excited for? Hmm. I honestly, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. I think season three is my favorite season because of it. We talked about it earlier. Guys, like the video, subscribe if you haven't. We've been rolling for two hours now. I am eventually gonna play the game. If you think you missed any of the game, you did not. We've been on for two hours. And we have not started the game yet. I'm almost caught up in the chat. And then we're going to start playing the game. I'm having fun though. I'm having fun talking to you guys. We've had consistently 30 to 40 people in the chat for 90% of the stream. Great time. I, I was like, if I get a dozen or more, I'll be happy. And we've had way more than that. At least double that for the 99% of the stream. I mean, we dipped under 30 for a while. But we've since bounced back. So like the video, subscribe if you haven't. We're going to talk Cobra Kai and play the Karate Kid game. It's also nice to know that the entire time we've been streaming, I've had the Karate Kid NES music playing in the background, in case you're wondering what that is. And in the background, we hear greatness. Somebody said earlier, it sounds like a retro video game, but it is. It's Karate Kid from NES, which we're going to play in a minute. Back to the chat, because every time I catch up, I start sidetracking, and then I mess up again. What am I most excited for? Nostalgia. I can't wait to see who they bring in. If Dutch is going to be the guy in prison that, that Kreese runs into. I want to know, like, I love theorizing. I know some people, uh, one or two people write in the comments, and I'm sorry if you're one of these people that hate that I constantly try to predict what's happening in my reactions, but that's how I like to watch things. And I do it in all my shows, and I feel like... It might not be what all people do, but I don't want to do what all people do. And I feel like, if anything, it's unique. But I do it in all my shows. I constantly am trying to predict what is going to happen. That's what I do. I theorize. And it's hard for me to not. And that's my channel. So I guess if you don't like that, you probably wouldn't like my reactions. But if you're here and you're talking to me and you like my reactions, then at this point, you know that I do that. So I want 
nostalgia. I want to know the things I got right and the things I got wrong. Like the Terry Silver thing. The biggest thing that got me in season four was I thought for the longest time that Terry Silver was manipulating the entire time. I've said it in my reactions to the point where I thought he was going to say, even back in the war, he played Crease into fighting the sergeant so he didn't have to risk life and death. But nope, it really ends up being that Terry's weakness was Crease because he is that much of a buddy. And then he realized, I got to shed my weakness. I got to throw you in prison because if you're in prison, you can't get to me anymore. But at some point, it might come full circle and Crease might get in Terry again. Because, I mean, Crease has fooled Johnny multiple times, it's very possible that Kreese could fool Terry multiple times. So, I don't know. We're going to have to see where that goes. But that's what I'm looking forward to in Season 5. Just type Cobra Kai deleted scene and you'll find the one. I will do that. That's about the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters. Dimitri has really grown as a fighter. He threw the goat Robbie. Yes, agreed there. We talked about that. Thank you, I'm Brazilian. Jose, Oh, talking about your name, great name, Brazilian. Are you a jiu-jitsu Brazilian fighter? Uh, laughing my ass off, Ray Ray Gunner. Do you think Johnny and Robbie will journey to Mexico to go find Miguel? And do you think Miguel will find out that he has a half-brother sister? I did not think about that. That's a nice angle. That totally makes sense. Jar, Jair Silvera. Jair I'm, I might be pronouncing your first name wrong, but Silvera, it's Jai with an R. I have a friend named Jai without the R. So Jai R, Jair, sorry if I'm butchering your name, but no, I have never thought about that angle. That Miguel, see, I keep going to the father angle. I keep thinking of what Miguel's father could bring to it. Maybe Miguel's father brings another kid into it. That's a good angle that I never thought of. Miguel has a, a step. See, maybe Miguel's father's not the fighter, or maybe he is, but he's just too old to really be part of it. So maybe Miguel has a stepbrother or sister. Interesting. I like it. It would be more interesting if it was a stepsister because they need more girls in the show. They brought Devin Lee in. We got Tori and Sam. There are other girls like Aisha and... Uh, Piper is becoming more of a thing now. Piper was Moon's ex-girlfriend, and now Moon's getting back in. Yasmin with Dimitri. But we need more fighters, so it would make sense for Miguel to have a stepsister, bring some more girls into the mix, have a, a different style of fighting. Could be interesting. Eli versus Young Daniel, and Robbie versus Young Johnny, and Miguel versus Young Mike Barnes. Are we talking who would win? That's a lot of fights right there. Eli versus Young Daniel. See, I feel like I, I'm i just going to automatically say Daniel should lose every fight. And that's just because I hate Daniel. No, I don't. I, I always say I hate Daniel. I don't dislike Daniel. Daniel, to me, ever since I was a kid, always was like a whiner. And they bring this up in Cobra Kai, which is funny to me because my whole life, I always liked Johnny Moore. Back when Karate Kid movies were on, I was like, Daniel, like, why am I supposed to like Daniel? Daniel is the one you're supposed to like. And I'm always like, he's kind of a douche. I don't like guys that retaliate in like ways like, I, I mean, Daniel, I mean, granted, I, it's hard to, it's hard to justify it because yes, they bully him and he has to do things because it's four against one. But like, I just feel like there were better ways for Daniel to handle it. And Daniel did things that yes, look bad. And Johnny looks at them in the way I look at them. So, I mean, it's up for debate and obviously everyone has their own opinion. And I know people rag on me because I always side with Johnny all the time. And I give, I do give Daniel a lot of crap. I admit I give Daniel a lot of crap, but that's just my opinion. It just, he just, I don't know. He just turns me the wrong way sometimes, most of the time. Whenever there's like an argument, most of the time I disagree with Daniel. And I don't hate him, and I don't think he's a bad person. I just, most of the time, disagree with Daniel. So, going back through. I'm not excited for the live-action Avatar. I thought it was a Netflix adaptation, but I never thought that meant we were going to get another live-action. Have you seen the first live-action? I have seen the first live-action, Silas. Not in a long time. I feel like I saw it back when it was in theaters. It's been a while. Yeah, Jair Silvera. All right. So I'm pretty sure I said it right. Jair Silvera. Daniel missed out hard, but I love Amanda too. Amanda, see, I... Guys, just so you know, I'm not saying you think this, but just in case you think this, 
I don't hate Amanda and I don't hate Daniel. It's just, if I got to pick a side, I feel like they're wrong most of the time. And I do expect more from them too, which is big. Just because I rag on them, like if I choose Crease over Amanda, obviously I know Crease is a much more horrible person and he's evil at heart. I just hold Amanda at a higher level. So I feel like she shouldn't stoop to the level of evil people. So if I rag on Daniel and his wife a lot... It's only because I expect greatness out of them, and sometimes they disappoint me. And they're also rich, and they also, uh, like, don't have to worry about as much as other people. I mean, granted, they built their, their mecca. They came from nothing, at least Daniel. I don't really know about Amanda. I forget if they tapped into that. But I, Daniel came from nothing. He built, he's a self-made man. So I respect that. I've said it in the episodes. I respect it. But... They, I feel like sometimes the money gets to their head and they don't realize what they're doing. Like when she's in a store buying golden truffle cheese right after she just lost a teenager her job that is supporting a family where the mother is like dying. And granted, Amanda didn't know that, but these are things as an adult and a person of a higher standing you should think about before you act. You shouldn't blindside a kid at their job. And yes, Tori brought in weapons and tried to kill Sam, but... You're an adult, and you're rich. Be nice. I know people people ragged on me for that too, but I don't care. You're an adult. You have money. You gotta be the bigger person. Like, like Tori's growing. She's she's learning. She's had a rough life. I, I give her credit for, for not having killed somebody already. Keep going with the chat. Silas stops Sam as the goat. Oh, Silas. Silas did, so, did I miss something? Maybe I missed something about Sam. Oh, I've got little complaints with season four except Sam. Also, when it was going real good, it felt like the show had to create a problem. Yes, I would agree. So that's where the Sam is the goat thing came in. See, Sam, this is the lead. The funny thing is, Sam probably had more fight scenes in this than she did in any other season. And I probably thought she did the best of all the seasons. But they also probably trained her more. And like I said, I feel like they... They played with what they could work with. Like, whatever Sam is good at, they worked with it with the editing. If you watch Sam's fights over everyone else's, because I've watched it many times, if you watch, like, all the other fights, everyone is, like, very offensive and defensive. If you watch Sam's fights, it's edited in a very defensive manner where most of the strikes and stuff start the scene on Sam with a defensive move or Sam just violently attacking on offense. But most of the interactions where, like, people are, like, if you saw Robbie and Eli, like, how they're throwing blows and strikes at the same time to the point where you can't even almost tell who struck first, that didn't happen as often in Sam's fights because I feel like the technique isn't there yet. So Sam had to kind of have, like, the editing done for her where it looked good, but it was done well. Don't get me wrong. It's just if I'm trying to really critique and see and feel and explain why I thought a certain thing about a certain fighter, that is why. Because I feel like the editing was helped. But hey, if you could do great editing and make the fight look great, and they did, I, I got nothing wrong with it. I'm just speaking my mind here. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. It's hard for season one to be the best, but just because it's ranked last... My best ranking, I'm not calling it bad. Of course, I agree, Silas. I might rank it worst too, but it's definitely not bad by far. It's Season one is way better than 90% of television out there, and that might be the worst season. They really focused on Sam in the final fight. Yes, they did. That's kind of what I was just talking about. Season two was heavy on the love drama. What you're talking about, season two, I, I'm reading that too fast. Season two was heavy on the love. Drama, what you're talking about, season two... The worst, it's 4 3 1 2. 4 3. You think, oh, so Abbas Kazmi, you think season four is the best? I'd say it was three. See, two, two and four to me is interchangeable, maybe. I'd have to really think about it. Two and four is close. Three is my favorite. I would put one last. So, I mean,. I mean, they're so, I mean, on four seasons, it's hard. And based on the fact that they're all good, usually in shows, by the time you hit season four or five, there's one season that sticks out as the worst. I would say in this show, there really isn't one season that blatantly sticks out as the worst. My opinion, one might be. 
But the fact that we have to think about it and talk about it, nothing in my mind clearly sticks out as the clear worst season. They're all debatable. Tori is so much better character than than Sam, I'm assuming, and Fighter. I would agree. I agree so much with you. I agree so much with you about Amanda and Daniel, I'm assuming. Sam got everything she deserved in the LaRusso house fight from Tori. I mean, I don't know if she got everything. I, I don't know. Sam got everything she deserved in the LaRusso house fight. So at the end of season three, we're talking... Did she get everything she deserved? I don't know. At that point, we were so back and forth. Everyone, at some point, everyone's done everyone dirty, I feel like, in the show. But some have done way worse, obviously. I still think that Tori might be the worst. Because Tori has willingly brought weapons in multiple times. Even though her head's not been in the right place and Tori's dealing with some crap and has a rough growing up, Tori has, in multiple situations, brought weapons into fights. Robbie lost his cool once when he threw Miguel over a balcony in season one, and Robbie has grown. I feel like everyone's had their down and out moments. Miguel, I mean, I mean, no one's done nearly as bad as I, I. If you had to pick the two worst moments, it's Robbie and Tori. Robbie kicking Miguel off the balcony and Tori bringing weapons into the mix. They're the two most violent. But everyone else has done little subtle things. But, I mean, Robbie and Tori also had the roughest lives. I mean, you could say Miguel hasn't grown up with a father, but he did have a great mother. Robbie had a bad mother and a bad father. Sorry, Johnny, but you were a bad father. And his mother was all over the place, going through rehab, not a great mother. Miguel at least had the luxury of one great parent. Tori has a sick mother and no father. Robbie had no parents, basically. I don't know if you remember, but in season two, I'm pretty sure it was season... What, I don't remember if it was season one or season two, but he literally lived by himself. He uh, had no power in his apartment. Literally, they shut the power off, and when the... the uh, I think it was Amanda came to his apartment, he had no power, and they had to literally bring him in and let him live with them. Like, Robbie had it the worst. I don't know, because Tori... I don't know, because Tori also had zero parents, but her mom was there the majority of the time, I feel like, until she got sick, and then Tori basically had to get a job and fend for herself. But, I mean, Robbie and Tori have rough lives. <sighs> have you ever played the Pokemon games? Jonathan Wu, I'm a massive Pokemon Go f player. I'm at level 47. I play it every day for hours and hours, but I've never played any of the other Pokemon games. Beside Pokemon Let's Go for the Switch... That's the only other one I played. Miyagi Fang never dies. Broncos country. You're supposed to like Johnny. The show is called Cobra Kai, not Miyagi-Do. I agree. Johnny's my favorite. Oh, I feel like I missed a couple things. Let's go back a bit. Uh, bu -bu -bu I hated Daniel in the first three seasons because of what you mentioned, but I actually started to warm up to him kind of. I agree, Silas. This was my favorite of all the seasons with Daniel. Of all the seasons with Daniel, this one was my favorite. Equally with Sam and Amanda. I'd have to say that all the LaRussos grew the most in this season. Amanda, Daniel, and Sam, all to me, were the highest moments in this season. So, hey, maybe all the LaRussos are growing. How long do you think Cobra Kai will last for? I'm thinking it will end around season 7 or 8. We talked about this earlier. I agree. I said my guess is 8 seasons, possibly 7. Somebody talked 6 seasons is what they have planned. But even if that is the case, I can't help but think that that's changing in the near future because of the success of every season. Daniel is not a complete douche. The only problem Daniel has is his anger, and he thinks his way is the right way. And Daniel isn't Daniel without the, the anger, because he always had a little bit of Cobra. That is a good point to bring up. Daniel is... The reason I'm always knocking Daniel and disliking him is because he is flawed. So, I mean, that is partly why he has the anger that would drag you to Cobra Kai. And he did go to Cobra Kai in season three, but only because he was manipulated by Terry Silver. You're supposed to like Johnny. We already read that. M M M M Miyagi Fang never dies. B -b 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 I'm Panamanian, actually. Oh, so Jire Silvera, Panamanian from Panama, obviously. Have you ever 
played Pokemon. We already talked about that. Amanda did have her own demons. They did explain that. That's right with the whole thing. That's right. I kind of did forget about that. Amanda had the whole thing with her, her mom cheating on her dad. Was it her mom cheating? Like now I'm mom cheating on dad, right? And then she bashed the car to the guy. Now I'm starting to brain fart whether it was the mom or the dad. But yes, Terry Silver party time. I love that Terry Silver keeps coming in with comments. Guys, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. I feel like I'm getting near the end now and then we're going to play the game. I agree so much with you about Amanda and Daniel. Sam got everything she deserved. Oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that. Cool, your name looks Brazilian. Oh, okay. That's why we thought we were Brazilian, but it's Panamanian. Johnny 2024 for president. So we got Dixie Normus. Dixie Normus. That is from a movie. Is that from Austin Powers? Dixie Normus. I think it's a woman's name in Austin Powers. But Dixie Normus, that is a good one. Johnny for president 2024. Do you like LeBron James? Jonathan Vu. Not sure if you're asking me that because you know the answer, but if you're asking by coincidence, I go on rants all the time about how much I dislike LeBron James. I feel like he is one of the most vocal athletes that knows nothing about what he talks about and starts a lot of problems and issues by not knowing what the hell he's talking about. I hate nothing more than people at levels of power in either media or sports or whatever have you acting that talk about things they have no business getting involved in when they know nothing about what they're talking about. And LeBron James has on many occasions opened his mouth about things he shouldn't when he's totally wrong and never even apologizes about it. So LeBron James is probably, I kid you not, one of my most hated athletes in sports, of all of sports. I despise LeBron James. There was a moment like a year or two ago where he did or said something and I literally boycotted the playoffs. I didn't watch basketball in the playoffs and I'm a massive Celtics fan and they were even in the playoffs I think I watched like one or two games in the first round and then I was done I literally was like I can't even watch basketball because every time I turn it on they're talking about what LeBron James has to say about something I don't want politics and sports meshed I like LeBron James could have any opinion he wants and I will watch basketball. But when you start bringing it up in every basketball game I watch, I, it, it, I, I don't want to watch anymore. It was like the Colin Kaepernick thing with football. I don't care your opinion. It, it has nothing to do with one side or the other. I just don't want it in my football. I watch football for football, not to hear opinions on politics by guys who make hundreds of millions of dollars. And that is my rant about that. When I say the show felt like it had to make a problems, I'm talking about Johnny being jealous and Sam being a prick and crying about how hard her life is in blah, blah, I talked about that too. I might have been too mean about it, but I did talk about how Sam is spoiled on another level. They multiple times showed Sam driving around this convertible Mercedes and money came up many times in the episodes. I talked about it many times in the reactions, how they constantly showed the struggles of Miguel not being able to go to college, probably having to go to community college because he's probably qualified and smart enough to go to Stanford, but who could afford Stanford? He, they, they live in Reseda and his mom is barely getting by. And like Johnny's broke all the time. Johnny had to get Daniel to give him a car and then he trashed it. And we haven't seen that car in a long time. It's like they're always showing the difference of how the LaRussos are filthy rich and Aisha's filthy rich. And Kenny looks like he's very rich. Kenny, who has the military father, we never seen the mother, but Kenny... And Sean are very rich, yet Sean still went to Juvie. So it doesn't necessarily mean that money will make you this sheltered, coddled person because Sean went to Juvie and met Robbie and Robbie and Sean look like they came from two totally different lifestyles. It's kind of showing you just because you have money doesn't mean you won't grow up to be a bad kid or something like that. But Sean necessarily wasn't a bad kid if you really want to think about it. We found out in season four that the reason Sean is in Juvie was because he protected his brother from bullies, but he was too aggressive, couldn't control his anger, like most in the show, couldn't control his anger, and that is why he's in Juvenile Hall, because he protected his brother from bullies. So it doesn't mean that Sean is a bad person either, it means he couldn't control his anger. 
And I mean, maybe it's one of those things. Guys, this is very possible that Sean is one of these guys who grew up with money. And now everyone looks at you like, oh, you don't know what it's like to grow up rough because you've been around money your whole life. So maybe it's like a thing. But... Maybe he had to make it where like, oh, you think because I'm rich, I'm not tough. So he had to be even more badass and more tough and fight everybody and beat everybody up just to prove a point. I've seen things like that happen before where people don't take you seriously because your parents are rich. So you got to prove yourself by beating the crap out of someone, almost killing them and going to juvenile hall, something like that. Uh... Unfortunately, my first name is almost exactly like the Brazilian president. Oh, so that's why Silvera was mistaken for Brazilian. But Panamanian, we have figured this out. Damn it, I already went back. Dixie Normus, if Johnny Lawrence was president of the USA, we would we would be the most badass country. The, the first thing that came to mind when you said that is when Terry Crews became president in Idiocracy. He was the Jack president. What was his name? What was Terry Crews' name in Idiocracy, the president? Oh, I can't remember his name, but it was a great name. I dare you to do Mickey Mouse impression. Jonathan Vu really wants me to do impressions, but I am not good at impressions. I really do like the story arc of Sam this season. I'm assuming that's Sam. Yes, I agree. Sam, favorite season of Sam by far. I was even going to comment on this. Unfortunately, the worst president we've ever had. Jose talking about the Brazilian president. Are you good at tennis? I'm okay at tennis. I'm great at most sports. Tennis, I'm decent at. I haven't played much, but I've played it enough where I'm decent. I'd say I could hold my own. Much better at basketball and football and baseball. I'm a very athletic person. Probably haven't played sports, though, in a while. I'm 40 and I don't think I've played in a good five years. I used to play tackle football like five or six years ago. I played with a group of guys. That was the last time I remember playing like a sport consistently. But that was a while ago. Robbie had bad moments like not telling Sam Daniel that Miguel returned the Medal of Honor. Yes, Robbie had bad moments like not telling Sam slash Daniel that Miguel returned. Did he not? I remember when that happened. Did he not? I felt like that at some point that was brought up, but maybe you're right. I liked Sam this season, but she was kind of unbearable. I mean, my favorite of the Sam seasons, but she's never a favorite of mine. And I always feel bad because she tries and she's not a bad actress. It's just she stands out in the in the earlier seasons for reasons explained. But she has grown. Agreed. Jose, I agree. He's horrible. Talking about the president of Brazil. Daniel is in season three gained balance and his training with Chosen in season three, he became Miyagi with a LaRusso twist. So Daniel in season three gained balance. His training with Chosen in season three became became Miyagi with a LaRusso. Okay, I get what you're saying. So Daniel now is Mr. Miyagi with a LaRusso twist. Okay, I could see that. I, I would agree. I would agree more towards that way of thinking. Because Daniel, like I said, I agree with all these statements. Sam, Amanda, and Daniel all grew the most in this season. Of of any season with them, I mean. Not of all the characters. I mean, they've probably grown the most of most of the characters, too. But of themselves, they've grown the most. Everyone always thinks their way is the right way. Correct. Th that was awesome, too. Because we're constantly... Uh, not arguing, but we're constantly debating throughout the episodes and the seasons. And right now, who is your favorite? Who is the best? Blah, blah, blah. And the whole season was about who thinks their way is the best. Cobra Kai, Eagle Fang, Miyagi Do. Now we got chosen. Everyone's whole thing, the whole season was my way is the best. My way is the best. And everyone always thinks their way is the best. Or everyone always thinks they're right. That is life. That is that is the the reason we debate and we talk and we're doing things like this. If we all agreed, what chat would we have? It's the self-righteous of Daniel thinking he's always right or the good guy. Yes, and that was the whole point of the Karate Kid movie, how we're led to believe Daniel's right because he thinks he's right. And now when you look at it from a different perspective, you can look at it as Johnny being right. But that is why Cobra Kai is so great at being like, Everyone's right if they want to look at it the way they want to look at it. Do you think the show's creators took the fan theory that Daniel was the real bully in Karate Kid and used it on Anthony? 
I think yes. I would have to uh, I would have to assume that everything that happens in this show is time repeating itself. It's like history repeating itself. The whole back to the future thing how Marty McFly is the same in the old West as he is in the eighties, as he is in the 2015s. It's like history repeats itself. You're going to make the same mistakes or generations are going to do the same thing. Everyone's got to make the mistakes for themselves. Like my dad made mistakes and I probably made a lot of the same mistakes he made, even though he told me not to do this or that. I probably did the things he told me not to and made the same mistakes. History repeats itself all the time. So yes, Anthony is probably repeating the same transitions as Daniel and Johnny and all this, and it's all coming full circle. And Anthony, I feel like, is going to be a much bigger part of season five. In season four, we were immediately introduced back into Anthony LaRusso. Then he was sidelined for a bunch of episodes. And then he kind of became more important towards the end, sort of building to what I'm assuming is going to be the major rivalry. I think Kenny and Anthony LaRusso are going to be a big deal rivalry in season five. And Sean coming out of Juvenile Hall and... Robbie and Miguel and Johnny and Daniel all kind of like coming together in the end, maybe helping Anthony because he's the weaker, younger fighter. I mean, Anthony is the least trained of anyone in Cobra Kai at this point. He's gotten like zero training and and he's just kind of signed up and like been willing to come on board. So we're going to have to see where that goes. But interesting how we see how Anthony LaRusso comes in. I mean, I'm actually very curious to see how that actor fights like like how the whole fighting thing is going to go with Anthony. That's that's because uh, the actor hasn't really thrown many punches or kicks. We really don't know what to expect as far as his technique and what's going on. I mean, maybe they've been training this kid for years and he's going to come out and unleash craziness. Hopefully he's good with technique because I want to see technique. And at this point, everyone else is far superior. Even Sam. I want Stingray to walk in one day and Flying tornado kicks silver in the face. That would be pretty epic if something like that went on. Jose, do you think the show's creators took the fan? Oh, we already saw that. Holy shit, he's actually going to do it. Almost done. The comments keep going. Ray Ray Gunner, I'm almost there. What do you think about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? Love them. If you guys didn't watch, I am doing another live stream this Sunday. I did a live stream last Sunday and I watched the entire Saints game. It was a do or die game. They had to win. They won. Now this Sunday at 425, they're playing. Also, the 49ers are playing different games, both at 425. The Niners have to lose their game and the Saints have to win their game. If these things both occur at 425, then the Saints make the last playoff spot. If the Saints lose, Regardless of what happens, if the Saints lose, the Niners win the last spot. The Niners have to lose and the Saints have to win. If the, if the Niners lose and the Saints lose, it doesn't matter. The Saints have to win and the Niners have to lose. So I will be watching that game live this Sunday at 425 live stream the whole game. It's going to be like a four hour live stream. Join me for that, guys, if you aren't. I'm not ending the stream yet. I'm just reminding you guys, join me for that stream. If you didn't hear earlier, we'll talk more Cobra Kai. We'll be on for four hours. And if the Saints win, I will go batshit crazy and probably take, take the next day off because the Saints will pull off what I thought might have been the impossible. When they lost with Ian Book in the last game against Miami, the game before last, I was like, that's it. Our season's over. We had like a 20% chance of making the playoffs at that point. We lost horribly and now we have hope. So not going to talk anymore about that. But Aaron Rodgers, I talked about in that live stream and I said how he, I think, is one of the most consistent football players in my lifetime. So Aaron Rodgers, I think is great. I think the Packers are going to go far. I don't think the Saints are going to go far in the playoffs if they make it. It's just exciting to see them make it in as the last wild card on a do or die back to back weeks. And it was also amazing that I was able to watch the do or die game for the first day I was back from suspension because I was suspended from live streams twice in the last two years for three months each because of showing too much on my live streams. So I'm able to do it, and I will do it this week, so it's Sunday, guys. But yes, Aaron Rodgers, amazing man. And did you watch the new Space Jam movie, Silas Space Jam, in full on Patreon, unedited? And Silas, aren't you on Patreon? I'm pretty sure Silas is on Patreon. If I'm pretty sure I see you on there all the time. 
If you're not, I'm crazy. I see Silas pop up all the time. Maybe you're just in the live streams a lot, but I'm pretty sure Silas is Patreon. But if I'm wrong, the entire movie of Space Jam 2 is on Patreon in full, unedited. It also is chopped up on YouTube, edited. So check that out if you don't have a Patreon. Where are we at? I'm almost done. But guys, like the video, subscribe. Since we're almost done, there's four comments left. I'm going to take one more shot. And then I'm going to finish up and we're going to jump into the video game after two and a half hours of talking, over two and a half hours of talking. We are going to finally jump into the game. But who wants the shot? And I'm going to finish the chat. Do you think Sean can leave Juvie and join Cobra Kai next season? I think yes. I think 100% Sean's coming out of Juvenile Hall. They introduced him in season three. They brought him up in season four. We introduced Kenny. Now it is Sean's time. Season five is Sean's time, and we're going to have the Pain Brothers. We're going to have Pain. They're going to have a motto. We're going to have a slogan. We're going to have the Pain Brothers. That's my guess. I recommend Black Griffin's One Guy 54 Voices video. You don't have to cut anything and just pop it up on YouTube. It's pretty freaking sick. I will check that out, Silas. Griffin's One Guy 54 Voices. I feel like someone mentioned that to me before and I never checked it out. Robbie held back on revealing it until season two finale. Sam chickened out on telling him about Ki kissing Miggy. Okay, that was going back to the whole metal thing with Miguel. All right, so I kind of forgot about that, but I guess that does make sense. Daniel Martinez wrote a message but retracted it. I had not seen Daniel Martinez in the chat, so welcome. I don't know why the message was retracted, but hey, I welcome you. What did you think of Devin Lee? I loved her and thought she deserves more screen time. Jose, if you weren't here earlier... Even though Devin Lee was seen probably the least of any girl fighter in the show, I think she is my second favorite next to Tori. I have high expectations for Devin Lee. I love her attitude. I love how cocky and confident she is, but she also knows her place. She also knows I'm not supposed to win against Tori this soon. If I did, I would have gotten such a big head or uh, beyond what she already has. She's confident, she's cocky, but she knows the line between being overconfident and knowing her place. And right now she knows I am not at that level yet. So losing to Tori was supposed to happen and I will come back bigger, better, and stronger than ever. Devin Lee to me is the mentality of the fighter in me, that I don't need the motivation. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I know what I need to do. I will take all that you want to teach me, but you don't have to like motivate me or anything. I will take all you have to teach me and I will go on the side and I will train for hours on my own and I will become the most elite fighter ever. And I think that's what Devin Lee's thing is going to be. I can't help but think that Devin Lee is related to somebody or something's going to come up with that later on too. But Devin Lee, one of my, if not my favorite additions to season four, I do also like Kenny's character. Even though Kenny is brutally violent and evil and vicious at this point at the end, I kind of can't blame him because of the way he was bullied and that's going to happen. And I like that he's a good bad guy. He's like Mike Barnes to me. I said this before. He is like the Mike Barnes of Cobra Kai in season four. And I like evil, crazy dudes. I like to, I like to have a guy that is believable in that role. And Kenny to me is good at what he does. For a little guy, he immediately had me believing his technique and everything. He's fast. He sticks and moves. And I... Definitely think Sean Payne is coming in, and that was the whole point of that, I think. But we talked about Miguel not getting, like, Robbie, not revealing the whole metal thing. What did you think of Devin Lee? We talked about that. Fun fact, I was classmates with Packers running back Aaron Jones at my college. I attended UTEP. Really? I Aaron Jones, I mean, I, I know the guy well. Well, I know him well in sports. I don't know him personally, but amazing. I was classmates with him. Did you, were you like friends with him or he was just kind of in the class? I'm assuming you said hello and you were acquaintances, but that'd be awesome if you were actually like on friendship terms with him. I am friends with Malcolm Jenkins' brother. Like I know, legitimately know, have his phone number, speak to, and often see Malcolm Jenkins' brother. If you don't know who Malcolm Jenkins is, he's been one of the defensive players on the Saints since... I believe his rookie year. I'm pretty sure they signed him his rookie year and he's been a saint his entire career. Malcolm Jenkins' brother goes to my arcade since before 
Malcolm Jenkins was even in the NFL, I believe. I'm pretty sure. But I've been friends with him and he's been going to my arcade. I've never met Malcolm Jenkins though. I, that's what sucks. I know his brother and I've known him for a decade, if not more, and never met Malcolm Jenkins. It, it's one of those things where he's like, I barely see my brother. He's a famous football player, makes $100 million. His own brother really rarely sees him. So how am I going to see him? But... That's like the closest I know to a football celebrity is I know the little brother of the, uh, and it's a Saints player. What is the odds of that? That I live in New Jersey and one of my friends in New Jersey's brother went and played for the Saints. So that's crazy cool. But like I said, I never met him, so I can't brag about nothing besides that. Who was your favorite character this season? I said earlier, I pro, I mean, favorite. Did I say earlier? My favorite character of the season, if I went new edition, would be like Devin or Kenny, just because of how great they play the role, not because of their good or bad or anything like that. But I would have to say my favorite character, I still just love Johnny, guys. I love Johnny. Like, it's just, he's so relatable. And he's only about 10 years older than me. And I mean, granted, I didn't grow up like Johnny did. I didn't grow up with that kind of life. And and Johnny is obviously on the outs. And I mean, I relate to him in the way of his mentality and his fighting style, I should say, because he definitely grew up way different than I did. But Johnny, I, I like, I don't know. I just love Johnny. I love Johnny. I can't help but smile when he's on and he just, the comments he makes and how he's so naive about some things. And like, I don't know. Johnny's just the greatest. I ended my th think last month because I'm going on a trip and saving up. Oh, Patreon, my membership. Okay. Well, it was on there. Space Jam has been on there for like, since it aired. I watched it live the night it came out, put it on Patreon in full, and it's also on YouTube. So you can check out Space Jam 2 on YouTube or Patreon. Patreon, you just get the full unedited version. The unedited version. I don't know. I said that so fast. Guys, we're nearing the end of the chat, and then I'm going to play the game. We got three comments left. Like and subscribe. Who wants the, the shot? No one has asked for the shot yet. I'm going to finish the shot, and we're going to play the video game. So as soon as someone requests it, I wasn't expecting you to say you like Aaron since I've heard some people compare him to LeBron. I can see. See, here's the difference between LeBron James and Aaron Rodgers. People ask Aaron Rodgers his opinion or force questioning out of him. Aaron Rodgers is the type of dude. He's like, don't bother me. Leave me alone. I just want to play football. That's all I care about. And then people are like, why did you lie about vaccination? And why did you do this? And why aren't you vaccinated? And what do you think about like people put Aaron Rodgers on the spot and they ask him things. And then he's like, you want me to answer? I'll answer. But people make him do it. LeBron James will literally hear something on the news and before he even understands what is going on, will tweet something that affects the minds of millions of people. And when he's wrong, which he often is, it's like a giant chaotic travesty. Whereas Aaron Rodgers might have opinions people don't agree with. And I don't agree with a lot of his off the field stuff. I'm just talking sports. I don't care about anything Aaron Rodgers does off the field. I mean, if he murdered babies, I'd probably be like, that guy probably shouldn't play football. But the guy tries to keep to himself. Aaron Rodgers never goes out in public and goes, I want you to know my stance on politics. People ask him questions and he's forced to answer them. And maybe he gets frustrated because people talk crap about him and stuff. But like I said, I don't, I don't care about what he does on or off the field. LeBron makes you want to care what he, what he says. And, and, he, and, and that's even okay. If you know what you're talking about, like you have to get educated in what you're talking about. He doesn't educate himself on what he's talking about. He hears something and immediately just like all over Twitter. And then people are like, dude, like, like even friends of his and, and people on his, in his camp, will be like, dude, back up and like read this and oh, and he won't even apologize. But we're going off on a rant now against LeBron. I go on rants about LeBron James all the time. I think he's, I, I never had a problem with him until he came out and thought he knew how to tell people how to live their lives and stuff. 
I was blah, blah, blah. You should watch Merlin. It's a Netflix. Hey, Abbas Kazmi. I think you wrote in a comment about Merlin. I saw somebody comment about reacting to Merlin. And now that I saw it, I feel like it was you because that name looks familiar. But never seen Merlin. I heard good things about it. Origin of King Arthur and Merlin the Sorcerer. I've heard about it. I've heard good things. Never seen it. Might get to it at some point. Do you know you have heard? Do you know or have you heard of Raul? Saxis. Raul Saxis? It sounds familiar. He's a Brazilian rock singer from the 70s. He has already recorded a version of Rock Around the Clock, a song featured in Karate Kid 2. Oh, yes, I do remember the Rock Around the Clock song. I don't, the name looks familiar, but I'm not completely familiar. My favorite character was shockingly Robbie. Robbie's one of my favorite. I definitely put him up there. Ro like, I love the. Like, the role, I mean, I, how would you put it? I love the way that Robbie's grown. Robbie has grown in great ways, and Robbie, like, isn't afraid to cry and go face-to-face to -face with people and speak his mind and admit when he's wrong. Like, the whole thing at the end with him and Johnny and him and Daniel have had heart-to-hearts. Like, Robbie is not afraid to shed a tear and speak truth even when he knows he's wrong. So, I respect that. My favorite character was Shocking Robbie. Grandmaster Sub-Zero. I love how Terry Silver retained that sinister and menacing smile while he fights. Yes, Terry Silver has the greatest look. I was re-watching when him and Johnny fought earlier today, and when he does that sidekick and blasts Johnny through, like, Terry Silver just has a great way of showing off technique. Like, He's a great fighter, but he also has, like, charisma in his moves. Like, the way he smiles and laughs, and he's just a great actor. I don't know the name of the dude. I, I know it if I see it, but I can never remember the actor's name. But he is a great, great man. Great actor. Uh, just classmates, never interacted with him. We're talking Aaron Jones. Awesome, though. That is great. He's Giants... Oh, it was the other... I was more friends with another NFL player... Giants offensive lineman Will Hernandez. Amazing. I'm New Jersey, so most of my friends are Giants fans. So, yes, I know Will Hernandez. Take the shot. Ray Ray Gunner, you get the shot, my friend, because Ray Ray Gunner said it. But when we're going to get to the bottom, and Ray Ray Gunner gets it. I don't know if you read what I said before, but I hated him in seasons before, and the fact that I care about him, I love Johnny, but Robbie was the most flawless this season. I mean, I guess it would make sense that... I would also enjoy Robbie because Robbie is so much like Johnny. And now that he's grown and realized his faults, I can't imagine I would like him. I, I must, I'm going to probably like him more than ever at this point. So yes, Silas, I did see earlier and I agree with you. I did. Guys, Silas might remember this. If you watch my old reactions, there was a point in season two or three where I despised Robbie with a passion. I remember in one of my reactions, freaking out over my hatred for Robbie. So yes, I have definitely turned sides and Robbie is now one of my favorite. I love when people admit their faults and grow and Robbie's done a great deal of that. I'm not old enough to ask for shots, Silas. You could you could you could tell me to drink and encourage horribleness, but I appreciate and I don't encourage drinking by minors. Silas, I I apologize. Holding Hawk down and taking a razor to his hair wasn't really cool in my opinion. Yes, that was crazy and the fact that they were like we didn't fight they threw punches they went three or four on one and then cut his hair off the fact that you don't consider that a fight blows my mind that freaked me out in that episode we followed rules and didn't do it. like what no last question chances of chosen versus mike barnes in the future that'll be awesome also take the shot so we got jair silvera Take the shot, too. Maybe I'll split them up. But last question, chances of... Ch chances of... Cho I mean, what's the age gap there? Chosen versus Mike Barnes. I guess they gotta be... I mean, Chosen fought LaRusso, and LaRusso fought Mike Barnes. In real life, what is the age group? I mean, the age gap. I know Daniel has aged amazingly. Ralph Macchio has aged amazingly. So has Johnny. I'm assuming Chosen must be around the same age. I know Terry Silver is... And Mike Barnes, I guess, would be the youngest. I got to assume that Mike Barnes is the youngest of all the old nostalgia fighters. But I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Aaron is really smart on and off the field. I agree. Aaron Rodgers is smart on and off the field, does know when and where to say things. Sometimes he gets frustrated and might 
say something stupid, but I feel like when he does say something stupid, he does know what he's saying. I don't think it's an accident. I think he just doesn't care, and he's like, I'm worth one half a billion dollars. I mean, Aaron Rodgers got to be worth like $300 million at this point. Like and subscribe, guys. We are almost there. I will take the shot and we'll play. I know I've said this for three hours, but Jesus. I mean, we've been going almost three hours. I have not stopped talking. We have not stopped answering questions. It's been great. Terry vs. Chosen and Barnes vs. Daniel. See, that makes more sense to me just because of the age group as far as the way they look. Chosen looks way older than Barnes and Daniel. So I feel like even if they're close in age in real life, I feel like Chosen and Terry would make more sense, even though Terry is technically in real life the same age. I played the Karate Kid last year. I just made it through the tournament. I played this Karate Kid last... I played this Karate Kid last year. I just made it through the tournament. I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Have you played the Karate, the Cobra Kai game that released? No, but when I looked up this, I found that and didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know there was a Cobra Kai game that came out. But when I was looking for the NES game, it came up and I'm like, hey, I didn't know that was a thing. I think it'll be Terry vs. Chosen. I already saw that. Bro, bra. I was so into Robbie in season... That moment him and Johnny made me shed a tear, that doesn't happen often. Yes, there was many moments in this season. The Miguel, I kid you not, I think the most emotional moment in the entire season was when Miguel was talking to Johnny when he was drunk, and then Johnny was accidentally called him Robbie. That was probably, to me, the most heart-wrenching moment, because Miguel was crying and Johnny was crying, but Johnny was so drunk he didn't know what he was doing. And then he mentioned, thought, I mean, he thought Miguel was Robbie or at least in his drunken state accidentally slipped. That to me was the worst. But the Johnny and Robbie moment, they teared up too. Great emotional moments with Johnny all around. Have you played the Cobra Kai game? No, I haven't. Terry Silver's actor is Thomas Ian Griffin. Yes, I always forget his name. And it's such a, Thomas Ian Griffin is such a name that, like, stands out. It's one of those, like, triple names. And Mike Barnes' actor, it's Sean Kanan. See, that I don't... I don't remember the last name. I remember Sean, but I don't remember Kanan. Ray Ray Gunner. You said something like, Robbie, you little shit. I think it's season three. Yes, I got really mad about Robbie. I'm happy that Ray Ray Gunner remembers the season three reactions enough to know that. Will the live... Will they live... Whoa. Will the live be saved or will you deprive it? What does that mean? Will the life, will the live be saved or will you deprive it? I don't know what you mean, Jose. Silas missed a comment and we caught up on the chat, guys. I am so pleased because now I could keep, I could keep going. We got so far behind. I didn't see normally there's not as much going on in the chat so I could like ignore it for a bit and catch back up. I love how much was going on in the chat, but I've never been in the position where I had to talk for three hours because of chat. I love the title of the stream. I was out for a bit catching up on episode one and two of Boba Fett, but I, it was fun time anyway. I gotta go sleep. Hope you enjoy the game. Silas, I'm probably about to jump into the game. I'm not probably, I'm about to jump into the game, but Silas, Thank you, my friend, for joining the chat, asking all the questions. I appreciate the interaction, my friend. Ray Ray Gunner, the live stream, I think. Oh, so Jose saying, will the live be saved? Yes, Jose, the live stream will be saved. Oh, now we have it. What's the best song? You are the best around or the moment of truth? The best around. I mean, best around is used in so many things and parodies. Nothing's ever going to keep you down. And then we got the moment of truth. The, oh my God, they're so good. Honestly, oh, I don't know. The best around or the moment of truth. They're both great. Take the shot. I'm Muslim. I can't drink. Take the shot. Abbas Kazmi, take the shot. So, all right, guys. Ray Ray Gunner was the first, but this is to all of you, specifically those who in the chat said it. I said, if you say a shot, I'll dedicate it. So we got, who do we got? We got Jair. Ray Ray Gunner, Jose, and Abbas Cosme, all in the chat saying take the shot. But guys, all of you have been great. We got 
Xander Brow. Xander Brow. We got to check out him later. Donated over $20 over the course of three or four different uh, Super Chats. You guys are welcome to Super Chat, but you don't have to. It's just Xander Brow. You know, sometimes people do it. No big deal if you don't, but like and subscribe. That's free. Like and subscribe. I will take the shot. We're going to now start the game. So Dez, we got Dez. Cheers to Dez. Haven't seen you in the chat. Bronco Country shot. Everybody, I mean, I've mentioned all your names at least 100 times at this point. The Jose is called like Joseph. Okay, so Joseph. I have many Josephs in my family. I, I'm Italian. I'm half Italian, half Irish. I have an Uncle Joe. I have a Cousin Joe. I have many Joes without the PH. So it's... Oh, so Jose... Jose... So it's Jose? Is it pronounced like Jose? Jose, Jose... Maybe it's Jose? The Jose is called like Joseph minus the PH. Jose? I, I mean, I might be butchering you, dude. Sorry if I am. I'm repeating myself 50 times because in my I, that's how I that's how I figure out enunciation. I just repeat it to myself 50,000 times until I either have you hating me or I figure it out. My apologies. But if I take off the PH of Joseph, I feel like it's Jose. Jose F Jose. Oh my god, I'm Jose. Okay, there we go. Jose. I was almost there. I feel like I was getting there. Jose. Got it. I feel like I know a person named Jose. Jose. All right, but hey, that works for me. I was getting there, but yes, all right, we got it now. Jose Carlos Gambara Jr. I love it. The better put, you better put it on Google Translate and listen to the pronunciation. I do not know how to explain. So Jose, I think I think it's Jose. That sounds like what you're saying. Jose. I'll call it that for now. And we're taking the shot. Yeah, that's it. Jose. I feel like I had a friend or know somebody, but I, or maybe it was in another show. Jose. I, maybe it was a character on a show or something I used to watch, but guys, we have made it. The accented E makes me think it's like that. Still no game. We're playing Z Thomas. We're getting in Cobra. Carlos is correct. All right, here we go. Cheers to everybody. We're jumping in the game. Cheers. Like and subscribe. Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. We're getting in on this. So I'm clicking the game. The volume is going to go up on the game. Cheers, Z Thomas. I just want to make sure the volume isn't too loud when I go to the game. All right, let me just die it down a little because we don't need it that loud. Because when I click the game, it, it ups the volume. I'm just going to put it like lightly in the background for us. All right, let me put back the chat. All right, guys, here we go. Everything in the chat is caught up. Cheers. Kind of wish I had a drink now. Ray Ray Gunner. We got Jose. Jose. Jose, right? Jose, yes, okay. See, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning my own judgment now. All right, here we go. I think light in the background is good. I think light in the back. How's the volume of the of the game? Is it too loud, guys? I think I'm good. Yep, here we go. Look, we're in. We're in. All right. We're playing the game. We're playing the game. Guys, I'm going to repeat myself. It's a tough game. Dez, I was just going to say, I'm going to repeat myself. I remember this being a difficult game when I was a kid. So, here we go. First round. I don't know if there's there, there wasn't a difficulty. Oh, jeez. I forgot I can't... All right, so I immediately crane kicked this guy in the head and immediately won. Sorry, I meant the volume is light and good. Okay, good. We're fighting this guy. There's no name. All right, that was the easiest fight yet. I know this is just going to be really easy. This first, I mean, it's the first round. All I've had to do is crane kick everybody so far. Easiest game ever. Yeah, I, guys, don't think this is a reflection of the game. I remember this being very easy, this part. I also remember, this is just button mashing at this point. Now you can't button mash this next part. All right, stage two. We've already gotten through. This part is easy. Here we go. I, now this is where it's going to start. I remember this part not being too bad. How am I crane kicking? 
The punch, I remember sucking. Ah, uh, maybe the punch is all right. I'm gonna have to figure out as I go. For now, what is that? Oh, it's uh, some kind of move. I don't remember how to do the move. We're gonna trial and error as we go, guys. I'll go to the chat. Oh, I remember you could jump in here. All right, ice block breaking. How do we do it? Life, life, life. La -hya! All right. Apparently the life bar has to be maxed out. I almost broke them all. So the life bar in that game has to be... There's always side games. I remember side games. I remember fly catching. I remember the worst one was always... Uh, the swinging ham... Oh, Jesus, Christmas. They're beating the crap out of me. Ah! I don't, still don't understand... I think the crane kick, I think I just don't touch forward. Yeah, the crane. So if I hold forward, oh, and I could fall in those pits. If I hold forward, I don't crane kick. Anything else is a crane kick. And those, this is the worst one. I remember this being insanely hard. I, I never knew what to do there. I feel like you have to like, go like, ha ha, and avoid the hammer. But I never was good at that. Ah! Oh, oh my god! The, oh, what was that? It just rapid fire killed me. I lost a life. And I feel like in this game, you don't continue. I could be mistaken, but I feel like in this game, you don't continue. So we're gonna find out. When I beat the level, we will pause and we will go catch up in the chat. But right now... Oh, I missed a crane kick! Ice block breaking. I feel like this is the easiest. One, two, ping ah! Damn it, I missed again. It looked like the life meter filled more though that time. Oh, I think I got an extra life or something. Oh my God. When you're up high, you have no defense. Oh, can I go? Oh, what is this girl? Oh, full life girl. What was she doing? What was that girl doing? Now, I spoke earlier, too. I, I don't think I jumped in that one, but I went too far. I spoke earlier about how this game came out in 87, so it's before Karate Kid 3. Fly catching. What? I caught one. This one I kind of remember, too. But I, the, the swinging hammer, I suck. Ah, I did pretty decent for a first go. I remember the swinging hammer being ridiculous. And guys, I will catch back up to the chat again. If I pass this level, we will catch back up in the chat. I feel like these guys have no rhyme or reason. They're just like running at me. And I just have to like... It's almost like running is better. Because they just keep coming. What's up? I can't go in this door? What's up? I got a lot of special... I'm saving all my special moves for the boss, because I'm assuming there's a boss. Oh my god, never. I have lots of crane kicks. And every time you get a crane kick... Jesus Christmas! Every time you get a crane... I'm just crane kicking guys now. I have a lot of crane kicks. It also does give you life, so... There's multiple reasons. Crane kick. Alright, I feel like we're near the boss. Boss, coming. All right, that's just a lot of repetition. There was no boss. All right, guys. So far, this I remember this not being the most difficult. The next stage, if I'm not mistaken, is the storm stage. Oh, looks like a boss coming. And I have so many crane kicks. Crane kick, crane kick. Oh, easiest ever. I saved all my crane kicks. Easiest ever. Here's the storm. All right, we're going to pause. We're going to pause. All right, guys, I honestly am wondering if I just sucked as a kid, but I remember specifically the storm stage being very difficult. So right now I am not at all impressed with myself. I'm pleased that I have a lot of, what is the D? I know the C is crane kick. What is the D? I'm assuming that's the a punch move because all you could do is kick and punch and jump. And it's Nintendo, so it isn't even Super Nintendo, but there's multiple moves. So I'm assuming the D is like a double punch, double punch, 
maybe something like that. But I got a lot of them, and I can't help but think I'm going to die quickly in this stage. So let's catch up on the chat. This part is easy. Things start to get rough in Okinawa. So it, was Okinawa the first? Was that level two, or is this Okinawa now? I feel like both are Okinawa, but this is the storm. Guys, it was the storm. I See, I, as a kid, I wasn't as into the movies, like when this came out, at least. When three came out, I rewatched them all. I became a big Karate Kid fan. But I'm just realizing that this is the storm from Karate Kid 2, I'm guessing, because there was a girl in the last one that we were rescuing. Was that like the girl from the village or something? Because this video game, if I was trying to use an image where it showed on the video game of Nintendo Power, Daniel-san in Karate Kid 2 with the red uniform that he has with the bandana, like doing the thing to Chosen on the cover, I couldn't use it as a thumbnail because it was too much of a... It was too big of a file, but the fact that it was there leads me to believe this is very Karate Kid 2 oriented. It's also 87. It came out right after the Karate Kid 2 movie, way before Karate Kid 3. I was thinking in my head, are, do we see Kreese as a boss or, or Terry Silver? I mean, I was going to say maybe we see him, but obviously not because it's way before the movie. Let me catch up on the chat and then we'll give a go on this. So like and subscribe guys, we're going to jump into level 3. So far I got to level 3 without I died once, but then I also I think got an extra life. I heard I did it again and I got something. But Ralph Macchio said in a recent interview when a fan asked about Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith making a cameo in Cobra Kai that he said they don't Yes, Z Thomas, if you look on my channel, I reacted to that interview. The interview you're talking about, I literally on my channel reacted to and gave my opinion on that Johnny Lawrence and Ralph Mach I'm William Zapka and Ralph Macchio interview. I gave my opinion on it and I even react to the interview. But yes, Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan are not part of the universe. The Karate Kid 2010 reboot is not part of Miyagi-verse, correct? He specifically brought up Hilary Swank and that is possible. Z Thomas, I also last night reacted to The Next Karate Kid. That is also on the channel. And that the reason I watched it is because this all came up. We were talking about the interview and what could be canon. So I rewatched The Next Karate Kid because that is the only Karate Kid movie that is canon that I hadn't rewatched since it aired in theaters 35 years ago. It came out in 94. It said on Netflix. But then afterwards, I looked on IMDb and it said 95, which was interesting. Netflix and IMDb had conflicting answers. Will Smith produces Cobra Kai. True. What? Will Smith produces Cobra Kai and could see them making it happen even if he plays a different character? I remember Will Smith being part of it. But is how much is Will Smith actually a part of it? Like, I do remember that now that you you bring it up, guys, because we talked about this last season or the season before how Jaden Smith could pop up because of Will Smith. I just totally forgot about that. But I guess it is possible. Swank would be great. Not sure what she's starting in nowadays. I talked in another live chat how Hillary Swank, the last thing I saw her in was a m movie called Mom or mother. It was something to do with mom or mother. I am mother. I am mom. I, I think it was, I am mother. And it was a futuristic AI takes over the world kind of movie. And she was very good in it. And that was the first and last thing I've seen her in, in probably the last like five or 10 years. So not really sure, but I love Hillary Swank. Great actress, million dollar baby. I mean, boys on the, uh, not boys on the side. What is it? Boys, not boys on the side. That was the Drew Barrymore movie. Boys? What the hell was the boys movie she was in where she was pretending she was a dude? I can't remember it. But Boys on the Side was with Whoopi Goldberg and Drew Barrymore. Boys? Oh, why can't I remember that movie? She won like Academy Award or was at least nominated. Boys Don't Cry. Thank you, Ray Ray Gunner. I have a feeling she will be. I would be shocked if Hilary Swank didn't show up at some point. And when I re-saw The Next Karate Kid, I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed it. It was cheesy and great. I mean, it was cheesy, but great for a 90s movie. I love 90s movies. They were amazingly ridiculous. And that was right up the alley of a 90s movie. Jaden Smith may appear playing some other characters, saw that. But Jackie Chan exists in Cobra Kai's universe, not as Mr. Han, but as Jackie Chan himself. 
So you're, are you saying that or is that an actual thing? Because I could see that being like Jackie Chan just comes in as himself. But honestly, Jaden Smith annoys the crap out of me. I said this before, how I loved Will Smith my whole life. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Independence Day. I love Will Smith to no end. But I feel like I've seen and heard things of recent that make me doubt the sanity of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. And those are parents of Jaden Smith. And that dude does questionable stuff in itself. Their whole family is a little out there. But I love Will Smith since I was a kid. And I'm not going to say anything bad about him because I don't know the dude. And these are just things I hear in the media. And we all know the media could trick us. That would be awesome. Joe say it could probably work with the humor they have in the show. Yeah, Jackie Chan jumping in. I mean, I would, I, guys, I love Jackie Chan. I feel like Jackie Chan might be the first martial artist I actually got into as a kid because when I was younger, that was when Jackie Chan was like becoming the greatness that he is. So I feel like Jackie Chan would be a great addition. I mean, the dude's old too, though. How old's Jackie Chan? He's got to be, Jackie Chan's got to be in his 60s or close to it, late 50s, 60s, something like that. I mean, I was watching the dude when I was little and he was probably in his 30s. Bop, 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 bop. That would be awesome. Bop, bop, bop. Is it daytime for you or do you have a light on? I have so much lights on. I have like all these lights on so you can see my beautiful face. But it's nighttime. It's almost midnight. I started the stream over three hours ago. It's almost midnight. Like I said, guys, like and subscribe. When I get through this chat, we are going to do another shot. Well, actually, no. You know what? I don't know. We'll see what happens when I get through the chat. But we're 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 caught up. Uh, but up up Johnny being cocky to him and demanding a fight or something. Wait, I missed something. But Jackie Chan. But oh, we're saying about Jackie Chan still. I think Johnny being cocky to him and demanding a fight or something that would be funny. Yes, the Karate Kid Four is not on Brazilian Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah, it's on. It's on my Netflix. I don't think any of the others are, but I talked earlier about how someone showed me or told me that the first three Karate Kids have been remastered in 4K. I feel like I have the original in 4K and it, I've had it, I feel like, but I don't know. Maybe the rest of them came out or they had, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but but they all are out on 4K now, so I might rewatch them all in 4K. I'm about to turn 17 on the 17th of January. Well, happy early birthday in 10 days, Abbas. Boys Don't Cry was the movie with Hilary Swank. Just out of curiosity, Viewmaster, View Media, what is your real name? Jay. Jason. J-A-S-O-N. Jason's my real name. Everyone calls me Jay. They already mentioned Jackie Chan in the series. I don't remember which scene, but I saw it in a video a time ago. I feel like... I feel like you're right. I feel like he's been mentioned in passing. Four feels like a TV movie compared to one and three, but I still love it growing up. Pat Morita is cheesy. and See, that's what's great. I agree with you. I feel like the reason the next Karate Kid, Karate Kid 4, if you want to call it that, which we did, Z Thomas, but I feel like the reason it's great is because Pat Morita has a great sense of humor. He was Arnold in the Happy Days show, which I saw way later in life. Great in that. He's very comedic. He did stand-up comedy. He was, I showed you guys, if you haven't seen it, go check out on my channel. I do a reaction and a review, so to speak, of the clip he's in with Leslie Nielsen in Spy Hard. Weird Al did the theme song. Like tons of famous, dozens of famous 80s and 90s acting, acting stars in it. Go check out the clip I sent on my channel. Pat Morita's got a great sense of humor and that's kind of how... Karate Kid 4 works. Hilary Swank is great at acting and she's the dramatic serious role and Pat Morita is just like jokes all around. And that is what makes the next Karate Kid, in my opinion. Hilary Swank's a great actress and Pat Morita's comedic. Genius. Uh, KP is saying he's 67. Jackie Chan is in his 70s. KP said 7, 67. I love all the Rocky references. Yes, yeah, so many Rocky references in those movies. Rocky, my favorite franchise of all time. They're, the picture of the Han Solo cat behind me is 
or was eventually supposed to be replaced by Dolph Lundgren signed shorts. I literally got a shadow box that was like $200 specifically for boxing trunks that I'm supposed to hang them in and mount them up there. I just never got around to it. But eventually, I mean, I do love the Han Solo cat as well, and I feel like almost bad taking it down at this point. But that was originally the what was supposed to happen. Karate Kid 4 is canon. The only problem is that it was a failure in the cinema. I love the Rocky references. Yes, all of this is true, guys. I am going to attempt stage three now. Ready? We're going to attempt stage three. Like I said, like and subscribe if you haven't. But we are going to attempt stage th attempt stage three. My dad is 65, 66 because he was either born in 54 or 55, either 54 of November or 55 of September. They didn't have his birth record. My dad's from Pakistan. Pash... Pashawar, to be exact, and my mom's 46. Sister, 19... Oh, oh, that is random crap we don't want to do. He's from Louisiana and convert, or as we call them, a revert. Okay, so your dad... My, my parents are the same age. My dad just... My dad's birthday is on the 20th of January, Abbas. So right after your birthday, my father turned 66. My mother just turned 66 in November... 15th. So it's funny because your parents are around the same age and their birthdays might even be close because my mother's born in November. My dad's born in January. My dad is just about to turn 66, but your mom is a lot younger. So your mom is a lot younger, but happy birthday to you in a 10 days. And my father will be shortly thereafter. I think Miyagi and Hillary Swank's characters were great together. Him subtly referencing how things were easier with Daniel because he was a boy was hilarious. Yes. While watching the movie, he kept pointing out how Hillary Swank is so much more difficult because she's a girl. And I'm thinking nowadays that probably wouldn't fly. People would probably get mad at Pat Morita, his character, Mr. Miyagi himself for constantly being like, Oh, girls are so much harder. It's like back in the nineties, that was acceptable. But nowadays that would be like sexist. That like, oh, because it's a girl and you don't understand and you're a guy, like blah, blah, blah. I feel like Miyagi would have got ripped apart in today's world. But it's Miyagi. I mean, she even makes fun of him. A lot of things were weird in that. Julie and multiple other, I mean, it's done by many people, but Julie, Hilary Swank in that movie, makes fun of him for his broken English, which also is racist, sort of. I found out about your channel from your reactions from season three just last year. Yes, I, I honestly, I feel like that's why my season four reactions did as well as they did. I feel like they did as well as they did because I got them out as fast as I did. But I also feel like my Cobra Kai audience is one of the best, if not the best on my channel. And every season it grows exponentially. Like, I feel like season five will be the biggest yet. This season four of Cobra Kai was the most successful show I ever did on the channel at this point. The highest views, the the highest success rate by far of any show I've done on the channel. So Cobra Kai audience, great. That's why I do so much content because one, I love it. And it's great to talk to you guys. As you can see, I could talk for four hours nonstop about everything Cobra Kai. It's not an effort to me. I found out about blah, blah, blah. at the end of the season four. I thought Julie Pierce would appear instead of Chosen. I thought that was very possible, but I also felt like at that point... It, I mean, it's it was possible, but I felt like they would have brought her in earlier than just a flash at the end. I feel like Hilary Swank is such a noticeable actress that they would probably incorporate her more in the season that they introduce her in. That's my theory. Like, Chosen, he's awesome, and we didn't expect him because we already saw him in season three, but the actor's not really... Apologize. The actor's really not doing much, so it's not hard for him to do it. Hilary Swank would have been a little odd, but possible. Bup, bup, bup. Maybe Hillary Swank shows up later in season four as an extra help for training. I found you because your Cobra Kai reactions and your My Little Pony reactions at Brony for Life. My my reactions at hashtag Brony. Oh, no, you're I thought you were saying at I'm sorry. You're saying hashtag Brony for Life. Gotcha, my friend. I thought you were saying you found me on a place called hashtag Brony for Life. I'm like, what's that? I feel like Julie Pierce will still appear in season five. I agree. I feel like Hillary Swank has 
to appear in season five. I can't imagine she would go another season, especially if people are right and season six might be the last season. But guys, I'm not going to take a shot. I'm going to give a crack at stage three. Here we go. Oh my God. All right, here we go. Crack at stage. Oh my God. I just used all my crane kicks. We're going at it, guys. I'm honestly, I'm just going to try to run. My tactic, oh Jesus. My tactic right now is just running through. All right, what do we got? Chopstick fly catch. I'm pretty decent at this one. Chopstick fly catch. All right, I suck. Oh my God, I haven't even caught one. Come on, Daniel. Daniel, son. One, one. All right, I suck. I apologize. All right, that was the worst I've done yet. I, I panicked. Say I panicked. Sorry, no bonus. At least I didn't lose a life. All right, guys. I am... What is that? What is that? What was that guy? He looked like a homeless man hanging from a tree. Oh, my God. I'm using all my crane... No! Oh, I died. See, that is going to be my downfall. My downfall is going to be falling in the pits. And I didn't even reach a checkpoint, I don't think. All right, guys. I am playing the tactic of running because I think I have two lives left to beat the entire game. I don't think you continue in this game. I think I remember that being like a really big reason why it was difficult to win. All right. Swinging hammer. The worst yet. I hate this one. I, I don't... This one I don't get and I panic every time. I feel like you have to do the perfect timing of the hammer, but I can never do it. Oh, I got another extra life or something. If I'm pretty sure that means extra lives. My God, sometimes it goes so fast and then they keep respawning and I don't know what to do. Like, look how quick they're all respawning. What do I do? All right, they all just died. That's what I do. I wait till they all die. And the pits is what you got to worry about. Falling in the pits. Swinging hammer again. I suck at the swinging hammer. Nah! I don't know if I'm supposed to push forward. If anyone knows, feel free to give me tips. Because the swinging hammer is the one I still haven't grasped yet. I, I never did. I remember as a kid, I never could understand it. I feel like the fly one was my favorite. And I feel like the ice one is the easiest. Because all you got to do is time the meter. Oh, lordy. Now I'm just running. As long as I keep them behind me, I feel like I can outrun... Oh, the swinging hammer again. I feel like I've got to press forward and do the karate thing at the same time. I'm not exactly sure, but that shit is going to keep killing me. At least you don't lose a life or I'd be in trouble. Why do they keep giving me the swinging hammer? I'm not going to touch any directional because I touch the directional every time. Maybe I'm just supposed to like... Oh, so it is a double punch. If I don't push forward, I do like some elbow thrust punch. Oh, it is. It's a double punch. He's going like, papa. -pa. Ready, watch. Papa. Papa. -pa. -pa. Double punch. Double punch. All right. Why have I got the swing hammer 53 times? Oh, there it is. Oh, I did it. Okay, no directional. Uh, but I think I got it. Oh, so I don't use the directional but I, un, uh, until I have to turn. All right. I think that might be the first time in my life I ever... What, what is this? What is this? What is this? How do, how do I... What, uh, kick me in the head? I think that might be the first time I've ever accomplished the... I'm running. I am running because I am going... Look at this guy. Double jumping everywhere. Ah! Shit. Like, I can't imagine this is another swinging hammer. Yes, this is the... I, I need lives, just in case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nah! -ha! Oh, what? I was like... I was like near the, the peak. What was that? Crap. Guys, I feel like I might be getting near the end of this level, but I also am losing life. Crane kick. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm falling. Oh, I feel like if I let go of the controller, I, I'm literally, guys, I literally am sunk. I If I let go of the joystick, it's going to sink. I can't jump. I couldn't jump. It wouldn't let me jump. I was stuck in the, in the thing, and I had to, like, hold diagonal. Guys, 
I'm doing better than I thought, I'll put it that way, but... I have, like, two lives left, and I have to beat the whole game. I've, I'm pretty sure you can't continue in this game. Chopsticks. All right, here we go. Chopsticks. All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh, I'm a friggin' genius. My God, I actually panicked there. I just started almost clicking buttons. Oh, I just karate... I just crane kicked a bird. All right. This is when I have to just run. When there's two guys behind me and they die, that means they can't get in front of me. All right. More chopsticks. I've gotten the hang of the chopsticks. Just can't panic. You just got to focus. It's literally like you just got to be patient and timing. Up. 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 Damn it. Damn it. As soon as I... As soon as I... I mess up once. It's like it goes out the window. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, you son of a bitch. He freaking kicked me from the top level. I have one life left. I knew I, I was like starting to get very optimistic. Like, my God, they just killed half my life. I honestly feel like the super punch, uh, the, the, the crane kick and the double punch only are good for bosses because these guys just respawn so many freaking times. What's the point? Oh my god. I'm I guys, I have one life left. This it, it might be it. Oh god, please give me swinging hammer of all things I can get bonus points on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, I did it twice. That's a record. No bonus. How many do you have to do cuz that's like a freaking record for me. All right, guys, uh, this is like do or die or I'm going to have to start the whole game over. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was going to go for the... Oh, I just... I hate it. I hate it. I think I have to start the whole game over. All right. Not surprising to me. <clears throat> Not surprising to me because I usually... I, I remember being a kid and dying at the storm stage every time. I don't know if I've ever... I feel like I did beat the storm stage, but I cannot remember what's next and if that is even the next level. I mean, is the next level last? I don't know. I don't know. Bup, 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 bup. Let's go back to the chat. Maybe Hillary Strength shows up later in season four. Uh, we said we did that. Feel like Julie. Here we are. Here where I live. It's already 1 a.m. I like it. I am. It's 12 a.m. where I live. So I'm only an hour behind you. I like to li I liked the live. I'm going to sleep now. Oh, Jose. Have a good night, my friend. Your choice. Broken ice or broken neck. Haha. <laughs> I like it. Jose, it was good having you in the chat, my friend. Like and subscribe if you haven't, but I think you've been around since season three. You already said so. Guys, like and subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to give it a second go. I'm going to take a brief pause and go get another shot and a drink of water. And then I'm going to come back and give another crack at the game. So feel free to stay. Like I said, like and subscribe. We're doing another live stream on Sunday at 425. I'll probably jump on around 415 early. So... If you're not sticking around for the... I'm going to be back in literally under a minute. So stick around. What is up? Al Sito. Al Sito. I think that's what it says. Al Sito. What is up? How are you? Welcome to the chat. I mean, Julie Pierce can show up later in season five. I had a brain fart in what Karate Kid game are you playing for the NES? Karate Kid 1 or 2? I believe there is only one Karate Kid game for the original NES, and it's the Karate Kid, which is this, but it's Karate Kid Part 2, the movie. The game is based on the movie. This is a Karate Kid game released in 87. Correct. It's about the events of the first and second films. That's right, because in the beginning they do have the tournament, so correct. They do have the brief tournament in the beginning, which you'll see. Favorite live action Batman movie. Mine is Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman vs. Superman, and Zack Snyder. I gotta go. Favorite live action Batman movie. I love... If you're giving me those as an option, I'll pick. But my favorite's the Christian Bale ones. If I can't choose the Christian Bale ones, and I gotta pick one of those, out of those, Zack Snyder is my favorite. But besides the Christian Bale ones, I also dig the original Michael Keaton Batman, which is the prior... I mean, the, the prequel to Batman Returns. 
Bye, friends. Jose, have a good night, my friend. But guys, like and subscribe. I am going to take a pee. I mean, guys, I haven't got up in three and a half hours. I feel like I'm going to fall over and my legs went numb. So I'm going to pee. I'm going to get a drink. I'll be right back. We are going to have this pop up, but I will be... Well, that's not the one I can have. Wait, where? I need a different one. Where are we? Where are we here? The... All right, well, I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to be right back. No sense in putting any of that. Did you know cousin Vanessa somebody in the chat told me that cousin Vanessa is Ralph Macchio's daughter? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought someone said it was Ralph Macchio's sister. Is it Ralph Macchio's daughter? I thought it was his sister. How many push-ups can you do? E I What does that say? Himesha? E I Himesha? I think I said that right. I used to do I kid you not, you're going to think I'm exaggerating, but I used to do 500 to 1,000 push-ups, sit-ups, dips, and pull-ups every day. From like 25 to 33, I would do a military workout every day that incorporated 1,000 pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, and dips throughout the course of the day. And I would do sets of 100. So I would do 10 throughout the day, like 3 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, 3 at night, give or take one in the middle somewhere. I could do a, a lot of push-ups. I used to be able to bench press 400 pounds. I got ridiculous chest strength. But I also injured my arm two years ago, tore all the tendons and ligaments in my right arm, and I'm righty. So I haven't really lifted heavy since then. It is his daughter, Julia Macchio. So Ralph Maggio's daughter plays cousin Vanessa. Guys, gotta pee, gotta get a drink. I'll be right back. Someone do me a favor and write it in the chat because I'll be back before I could even write it. So... I'll be right back, guys. Like and subscribe. Oh, cripple. Oh, my God, my legs. I have no blood in my legs. Kombucha and whiskey, the best mix. Kombucha and whiskey, the the breakfast of champions. My sister's been getting kombucha a lot lately, and I've got to admit, I love it. It's like really low in calories. It's I'm not really much for carbonated drinks, but I've got to say, it does the job. It is. It, I get it from Costco. It's not like, I mean, I'm not sponsored or anything, obviously, but it's called, hmm. I don't know how you pronounce it. Hum or hmm. But this one is mango passion fruit. Delicious. I also have this from earlier. I forgot. This was my lemonade 
a Kai Berry seltzer, alcoholic seltzer, but I put a Kai Berry juice in it and it froze solid. So I got to wait till that thaws. But that's what we're working with here, guys. Guys, I'm so happy that we have never dropped below like 15 people in the chat. I thought, I told my brother, I'm like, I'm going to jump on. Maybe I'll get like a dozen to 20 people, give or take. We had 30 to 40 people most of the time. We've never dropped below 15. I'm going to pour myself a frozen shot. Shot time, let's go. Broncos country. Are you a football fan, Broncos country? Because I don't know if you're Broncos country because of the Denver Broncos or you're just like into horses. Like it could be Bronco country like you're a fan of horses. I don't know. All right. We're good. Everyone's good. Everyone, we're going to take a shot and then we're going to get another go on this game. Who is enjoying the game? I gave one go in three and a half hours. I gave one go through and I feel like I lasted all of 15 minutes and I even took a break in the middle. I knew I would at least get to the storm stage, but like I thought, I died on the storm stage. I remember as a kid being so frustrated because when you would buy a game as a child, you usually didn't have options. It wasn't like you had other games to play or you could download something else on Steam. You bought a game at Toys R Us, you're stuck with that game for like a month, maybe. I remember my mom would buy me and Ray. I We would each get to either agree on a game every other week or maybe like once a month, we each get our own game. We didn't get them as often as I feel like I remember, but we had a decent amount of Nintendo games. We had a, a good amount. It didn't hurt that we were both around the same age. Ray is two years older than me, give or take. I feel like it's like a year and eight months or nine months, something like that. But we were both around the same age where we got to take advantage of the fact that each other liked the same things. And we it'd be like, all right, you ask for this and I'll ask for this and then we could share. So it was kind of one of those. And I remember playing this and it was brutal. I got my Eagle Fang shirt on too. I got it from Amazon. I got Miyagi-Do shirt from Walmart, but the emblem in writing and shit came off. Yeah, sometimes some of those shirts aren't ironed on as good as they should be. I have a lot of shirts like that where the iron on came off way more early than it should have. Dimitri and Eli's Binary Brothers YouTube video show is amazing. Demet yeah, I know it is. I think the quality, considering the age of them, I mean, they were like smart, like computer type kids, but they, they had a, some good stuff going considering their age, especially. Yes. I live in Denver and the Broncos are my favorite football team. Good to see football fans in the, in the audience. I always appreciate football fans. Abbas is like in the gaming. I used to have this karate kid game on NES. I had all of them. I had a lot. One of my friends in Jersey is amassing one of the biggest collections I've ever seen. He probably at this point has the biggest collection in Jersey. I'm talking two to 3,000 cartridges. And I'd say 75 to 80% are Nintendo. Super Nintendo, 80% are like regular NES. Then he's got the rest are Sega, Super Nintendo, Atari. Only cartridge games. He doesn't collect anything that's on disc form. Anything cartridge he collects. And he's got upwards of I feel like two or three thousand he might even have more than three thousand I hope we could beat the Falcons on Sunday I hope so KP I don't doubt we could beat the Falcons I'm more concerned even though the Falcons could step up whenever they want they got Matt Ryan and everything's great that's Saints we're talking football I mean I'm more worried about the Niners pulling off a win I am more doubtful that the Niners will lose than the Saints will win is my thing so hopefully they both happen and we're in it. But Yasmin told Dimitri, consider me an admirer from afar, which is a callback to what he told her in season one. I, when she said it, I figured it had something, but I honestly didn't think too much about it. But interesting. My sister and brother-in-law just moved to Denver four months ago. And my brother-in-law's a Brady. So whenever Brady goes in, He's a construction manager and he plays flag football. My brother-in-law's a Brady. 
So whenever Brady goes, he goes. I don't understand what that means. My cousin, my brother-in-law's a Brady. I'm assuming you mean a Brady fan. I'm assuming you mean a Brady fan. I'm not sure if I'm misunderstanding that, but we're going to take a drink of this. We're going to take a shot and then we're going to jump back in this game and I'll catch back up on the chat, but we're doing good now. We're maintaining shot and game and sh shot. We're maintaining shot and game and chat. Fan. Okay, that's what I thought. A Brady fan. So whenever Brady goes, he goes. I get you. Oh my God. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> Mm. Uh, there's some Arizona green tea, my kombucha. Uh, okay, guys. Second go around with the game. Then we'll read more chat. Ready? Let's see. Now, guys, you can see from the beginning of the game again. This is... We're, I forget who said it, but this is Karate Kid 1. Crane kicked right in the face. I wasn't even looking. This part of the game is ridiculous. The the easiness of the first round and the hard... Like, there's no curve. It's like the, the first level is the most ridiculous thing you'd ever play. You could literally do it blind. Then the, fir then the second level... Like, look, I'm literally just running at this guy and kicking. Easiest level in the history of gaming. I mean, they're probably a slightly easier things, but look, ready? This is the boss. I'm just gonna like pound buttons and walk towards him. I was barely hit once. And that was all four levels. Now this level is reasonably average, but then the third one gets ridiculously hard. It's like there's zero room for, for, for gaining. Like, how are you supposed to learn the curve of this game? The only thing you really learn in this stage is the bonuses. You could grasp the bonus stages. I mean, but these dudes, it's the same as the rain. It's just the rain is pushing you. Ready? Chopsticks. Who thinks I can do perfect? I do. Chopsticks. Okay, I'm already doing the horrible. One. Eight. Six. Seven. Twenty-two. Sixty-six. Forty-four. One hundred. Ah! I'm... I'm I get nervous and then I start slop. Ah, I did all right, but I got sloppy. I got nervous. I got nervous. I'm scared. I'm scared of everything. I'm so afraid. I got to put this down. Please don't attack me. Please don't attack me, guys that just run at me. All right, here we go. Now, there's also special things like a weird dude that looks like he's hanging out of a window and a girl with pigtails. And what else did I say? I think I saw Mr. Miyagi once. God. Like, I want to see those things. Oh, like, how did you get up there, dude? Like, what, what are you doing up there? Crank kick. Oh, and I immediately use it. Like, what waste? What's in this one? See, I actually kind of want to get better at the swinging hammer. Ready? No. Okay. That sucked. The swinging hammer is the only one I still do not completely understand. Oh. I... I feel like the punch is so useless. I feel like you only need the kick. Like, who is that? She gives you full life, but is that like... And did I miss one? I might have missed one. Ice breaking. This one might be the easiest. Ah! I can never break the last one. I don't think I've broke it yet. Great, but not perfect. Oh, free life already. We're doing good, guys. Haven't died yet. Got a free life. Oh, oh, so now you just decide to jump on my head? Why can't I jump in some of the doors? Is there like a... Like, I don't understand why you can go in every door except that one. I feel like there's a reason. My sister who lives in Denver is 28. Oh, as soon as I look, they kicked me 500 times. Brother-in-law is 26. Yeah, how about you get kicked in the face guy on the ground? Kick in the face. Kick in the face. All right. Now we know that this is a... this. See, this I thought was the end last time, but it's a trick. Right here, that looks like a boss stage, but it's... No, it's not. I'm saving all my crane kicks and my double punches for the what might be the end boss. Oh, want another crane kick. I want that... Oh, you son of a crane kick. See, I didn't even think that was one, and you could go in it. All right, here we go. Swinging hammer.
Oh, that's my best yet, though. Four. What does that get me? Very good. All right. So four is very good. What's the limits? I don't know. But that's the best I ever did by far. So basically, you don't have to... You just have to hit the direction. Crane kick. Crane kick. Dead. Two crane kicks. You're dead. Is that supposed to be Crease? Like, who's that supposed to be? Johnny? No, no. See, Johnny was, I guess, the first guy. Who was that? Crease, maybe? I don't know. All right, guys. I have not gotten past the storm level yet. I don't know. I'll know when I do it. I'll, like, if I see it, I'll probably remember, but I don't know if I've ever, even as a child, gotten past the stage. Swing and hammer, I'm getting better. That was goddamn horrible. And I, like, I feel like the swinging hammer makes me panic the most because I, I still don't fully understand. What is that of? A man hanging out of a window or something? I like the music. Crank kick. I also like the crank kick thing gives you life because I often need it. All right, guys. I think I'm, I think I'm doing the best around. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh Jesus Christ! This happened last time. I get stuck in the middle. So many swinging hammers. Ah! All right, I'm I'm getting it, but it's it's definitely the most difficult of the bonus games, and they they just keep giving it to me. Damn it! Maybe it's better if I go towards the edge. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna perfect that. I feel like at some point I'll be perfect at all of them, and then it'll be a matter of just getting through this torrential tsunami. Guys, I'm doing pretty good. I'm digging it. I'm doing pretty good. One, two, three. Ah! Yes! That's the first time I've ever broken all of them. I actually didn't think I was gonna. I thought I was like one mark off. Guys, I'm getting free lives out the wazoo. I, I'm, I'm getting pretty confident about this run through. Oh! Now watch, I die like ten times in the pits. All right, swing and hammer, swing and hammer. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, but I like, I actually think it's better if I move to the edge. Like, I feel like I have the timing better. Oh, I just wasted two crank kicks. Yeah, yeah. All right, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm approaching the, Jesus Christmas, oh God in heaven. Got it, ah! I hate when they're... All right, calm down, Jay. I gotta jump over them. I'm gonna jump over them. Okay, I don't know what to do. I'm so scared of everything in life. Ah, you pieces of sh... I didn't even know I went in a door. Thank God I went in a door. Oh, you piece of crap! I was so close. Four's my, my record, but right now I'm, like, very frightened of everything in life. Ah! I'm like, so tell Miyagi! 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 Oh, thank God I got Miyagi. I was like, I will die for Miyagi, because I know it's full life. Guys, I feel like I'm getting near the end. This looks like the end. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, this is... Oh, God, it's the girl! It's the girl on top of the pole. Yeah! Did I have to beat him? I guess not. I just won. Oh, God, guys. The last fight against Chosen... I do remember this level. All right, so I have gotten here before, but I don't know if I've ever beaten this game. I do remember... Jesus Christ. I'm just... Guys, I'm gonna let... I'm gonna let them chase me. I feel like if I let one guy chase me, it'll, like, make my life easier. I'll just have to fight one guy. Jesus Christ. Oh, and now I got rocks with... Like, what? Yeah, like, see, if I let that guy chase me, will that make my life easier? Uh, uh, uh. I'm literally just running. I'm just running. Oh, yes, yes, get, stay behind him. Stay behind him. Oh, that's so perfect. See, like, now if I just let them chase me, I don't think I'll have to worry about another guy. Oh, my God. This could be the easiest level yet if I just do this. Give me that girl. Give me that girl. Give me that girl. Oh, shit, I jumped past her. God damn it. 
Ah. All right, I get something out of this. Oh. What is that? One, two, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, bop, bop. Oh, je <laughs> that was the worst ever. Worst ever. God, just when I needed, like, bonus stuff. At least they disappeared. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Ah, I'm not going to make it out of this one. I don't... Oh, thank God I got life. I want to get in there. Oh, God, God. Oh, Jesus. Get him in there. Get in there. Ah! All right. Guys, I, I, I have so many punches. I don't ever use punch. Jesus, man. Jump over their heads. I just want to jump over their heads. Yes. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. I'm just playing this game. I ain't even going to go in any doors, I don't think. If I just keep going like this, I should be able to, to run to the end. But then can I beat you? Oh, give me that girl. Yeah. See, guys, I should, like, probably just run. Oh, I have to go in that door. All right, swing and hammer. I hate everything. Sometimes I do, like, really good, and sometimes I'm just horrible. But, guys, four lives. I feel like I'm halfway through. What is, like, what is that? What is that? Crank it. Like, why can't I go in there? Go in there. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Oh my god, there's like three of them. Is there three of them? Get away from me. Oh my god, you guys. Like, what is what is this? Gang bully. Oh, and now I jump in. What is it, based on how many guys you kill? Oh, I'm flying it up. Flying it up. Boop. Fly it up. Oh, I'm doing good. Oh, I panicked. Oh, is that all of them? Perfect fly catching. I want life. Give me a free life. That's what I need. I need life. Because I don't know how difficult Chosen's going to be. Is Chosen difficult? Because I feel like I might win this. That'd be uh, epic if we did like a three-hour talk and then I beat the game on the second go-around. Uh, uh, fudge. I feel like I've got to be close. Oh my god, I'm so close to dying also. I need like a girl or Miyagi. Where is he? Oh my god. I was like, I don't even know what to do. I'm just panicking. Ugh. Ugh. All right. I'm going to start using punches because I have so many double punches. Yeah, look at that double punch right to his god dang head. I'm just going to start using double punches because I feel like I'm almost there and I just want to achieve. Even if I just see Chosen, I'll be happy. Oh, like, what is this? Is this it? Uh, uh. I thought I fell in the hole. God, I'm so tense. All right. We're, we're getting there, guys. We're getting places. I feel like this is it. I see the lanterns. Oh, my God. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. We're here. There's the girl. Uh, uh, uh. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Chosen. Like, please let me start there. Oh, uh, well, it's not too far. Guys, Chosen, like, I wasn't prepared. Chosen had a guy with a spear coming at me. That's like, that's not fair play. Guys, we might actually beat the game. I don't know if I've ever, be I don't remember ever seeing that with Chosen. I might have never achieved it. Oh, I died, but gained a life. I died and gained a life. God, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so tense. I actually, like, I'm, like, thrilled that I, that ch Chosen. Oh, my God. Tell me I'm going to keep falling down the goddamn pit. I have one life left. This is it. I'm double punching my way to the end again. All right, double punching my way to the end. It's do or die on this one, right? I got to redo the whole game again. Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. I hate everything. I hate everything. I'm so mad. I, I literally had so, such high hope on the first go around. 
Uh, Merlin is great. It's six seasons, 13 episodes, straight plot all the way through. You should check it out, Jay Abbas. I definitely will. That's one that I forget about, that people have brought up to me many times. But I often forget it. I thought I played this before, but don't think so now. Yes, Z Thomas. I... It is the one for Nintendo. I'm 42 years old, and my brother... This is an emulator, though. But it, it is... I have the one for Nintendo. I'm just playing on an emulator. I have hundreds of Nintendo games. One more go around. I'm definitely going to try one more time, because I am optimistic now. I literally saw the end. I saw the end. I literally... I'm an idiot. I saw Chosen, and I'm like, all right, I got enough lives. I'm just going to chalk this one up to I made it, and then on the next one, I'll win. And then I didn't even make it back there. But I am so close. I'm I'm thrilled that I made it there. I thought I played this... Oh, he said that. I'm 42 years old and my brother is 45. I'm 40 and my brother is 42. Cobra Kai is like a dream come true to us. We used to love getting Nintendo games at Toys R Us too with our pops. I'm a diehard 49ers fan, by the way. That is hilarious. So you and your brother are almost the same age as me and my brother, but slightly older. Both went to Toys R Us for games and are the rival of who I need. So you need me. Well, you don't need me to do anything. You just you just need your team to win, and you have a sealed the deal. I need to win and have you lose, so you're in a better spot. Chosen with a spear. Did you see that? Was Chosen with a spear, or did he have a guy with him that had a spear? It looked like both. Merlin actually starts out as Arthur's manservant, and the bromance slowly flourishes. Really? Interesting. It, I'm, well, obviously, Mer like, how old is Merlin in it? I feel like he's, I mean, he, I'm used to Merlin being like an old man, but I feel like he wouldn't be. Like and subscribe to the video, guys. I'm going to take a shot. We're going to go another go around. I, honestly, if I didn't do so well, I might not care, but I need to know. I also just realized this is LJN. And the Angry Video Game Nerd just did a whole thing on LJN, and I haven't watched it yet. He supposedly, I don't know how real this is, but supposedly the Angry Video Game Nerd bought LJN. Like, he he now supposedly owns all the rights and is changing the original NES Back to the Future game into a better game. I don't know how much of it's real or not, but I feel like it's a real thing, and I haven't watched it yet. I've been behind on Angry Video Game Nerd. So you guys... I don't know, if you like games and stuff, you might not, you might know that, but shot, cheers, and then we're going to game again. Ah, delicious. So yeah, guys, feel free to write in the chat, ask anything you want, we're still going to chat, it's just now it's more manageable where I could play and chat. So feel free. Arthur Merlin, we both were both in their teens, early twenties. Okay. Chosen with a guy with a spear. Oh, it was chosen with a guy with a spear. Okay. Have you seen the 19 or the 2019 movie W V W V F W with Martin Cove. It's silly, but pretty good. V F W like like a VFW hall, like a veterans for like, I'm, oh my God. Was it the movie with all the old dudes? I think I see, I think I saw like a cover art for it. It had like all the old dudes, the, the dude that played the Grim Reaper from Bill and Ted, I believe was in it. If I'm not mistaken, here we go, guys. Easiest part of the game. I literally just hold forward and kick. So at least that's good. Yeah, I definitely... I didn't see it, Z. Thomas, but I definitely know what you're talking about. It had a bunch of old school dudes that were all like, what is the movie? They're just at like a VFW hole? Koala Kai. Koala Kai. I like Koala Kai. Yeah, what is the point of the movie? I just, yes, yeah, Stephen A. I just remember there being a lot of uh, recognizable old dudes in it. Like and subscribe, guys. We're playing Cobra. We're playing Cobra Kai. This is my third go around. I've gotten further 
each time, but I've only played twice. But the last time, guys, we got to the final level. We got to the final level, the final boss. I don't know if I've ever in my life gotten there. And I did it on the second go, so I must have achieved greatness at my old age. I also can break ice like a son of a bitch. Ready for this shit? No, I didn't do good there. Jay, do you remember the Koala Kai commercial, More Mercy? I don't actually remember that. I'm not sure I do know that. Koala Kai? I, th I thought it was a funny joke, but I don't... Maybe if I, like, saw it, I'd remember? It doesn't ring a bell. Koala Kai. All right, all I know is we are going to be Chosen. I love that Chosen. I love that Chosen is actually the boss. Huh. Come on. All right, what do we got here? I don't even mind the swinging hammer anymore because I'm getting pretty good at it. See, look how good I just did there. Amazing skill level by me. I am just god dang amazing. I gotta remember to save. Oh, look at the girl. I'm. A, I gotta assume. Like, wasn't that the same girl that was the one I rescued in the second level? It almost looks like her. And I'm almost wondering if bonus stages are triggered by the amount of bosses you kill. Because I feel like some guy, some doors haven't let me in, and then I killed a certain amount of guys, and and I was allowed in. Am I crazy? I almost am trying to exceed for myself. Like, no, nope, see, I still can't go in there. I don't know. Maybe it's just hit or miss, because I feel like there's more to that. I feel like they always did weird things in Nintendo games that you kind of, like, had to figure out for yourself. I got... All right. Hurry up, Jake. Time for rapid fire fly catching. Oh, I'm doing good. Oh, one more. Or maybe two more. Oh, I thought I saw one over there. What was that? I could have sworn I saw... Maybe... Maybe there's multiple and you don't have to catch them all because I could have sworn. I just got an extra life. Extra life. All right. Oh, see, like, how come? Like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I can go in them and sometimes I feel like the same one I can't. Look at this guy running after me, jump stepping. Jump stepping. Running away. Sometimes it's better to just have a guy chase you because then you don't got to uh, tackle two guys. But the this level's pretty easy. This level, I don't think I've ever had a problem with. Miyagi. It's just like, like, is any of that triggered by things? That's what I'm wondering. Like, how did Miyagi show... Oh, Jesus, I wasn't looking. Crone... Yeah, crane kick. I mean, th that level's ridiculously easy. The first two levels, I wish you could just skip because it's almost like just a waste of time. This gets difficult. However, see, I think my problem was, as a kid, I probably tried to fight all these things. Like, the birds and the things flying at you in the wind. I feel like I probably tried to fight everything. And I suck at the hammer swing. But I feel like if I just ran, like, I, I probably was like, oh, you can't run. Like, you don't run from things. But running is probably the best option in this game. My god, if that step wasn't there, I probably would have just died. Do, 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 do. It's interesting music, I dig it. Considering it's just like, you know, regular Nintendo music, I like it. We're gonna just karate kick everybody. Like, see down there, there's like writing on stuff. It almost looks like you could go down there, but this isn't the type of game where it has like hidden stages and stuff. All right. Oh, every time I feel like I've got the pattern down, I screw up. At least I did better than last time. I feel like the ice one I get the least. And I feel like the ice one is also the easiest. Although the fly one isn't too bad if you just focus, focus. Which is funny because the whole point of the lesson is to focus. And I feel like when you panic, that's when you do... Like right now, I'm like not letting the... I, I could tell when I'm going too fast. Like, I, I, I'm I getting cocky, and then I just click, 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 and you can't do that. Daniel. Do, 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 do. When I see Chosen next time, I am going to have no mercy. No mercy. Come on. This is the part I got stuck on last time. 
you pieces of shit. Oh, and they knocked me to the top. Great, great, you knocked me to the top. I hope you're happy with yourselves. I hate it, I hate it. There's just so many things. Jesus freaking Christmas. Oh, and now we're on water. Now we're on water, great. I hate the pits, because I always get kicked in. Oh, 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 I got two follow me. This is perfect. If you keep two, fo oh, and then they both died. Great. One, pa that's all of them. Oh, what? I pretty much got them all, I thought. I thought I got the, the highest target. Oh, oh. See, water's the worst, because you could have full life and immediately die. Like, I hate pits. The pits are the pits. Kick you in the head, kick you in the head. All right, apparently I can't. Kick you in the head, kick you in the head. Oh, crane kick. Ugh. Oh my god, oh my god. This is, like, I get stuck on the same two spots. Like, that part and the one before are the two spots. Now from here, I should be all right. Oh, and all I gotta do is climb the pole at the end. I think we're there. All right, guys, this level is not becoming a problem. Why is there, like, a boss guy there, but I don't have to fight him? Like, do I get something if I fight him? Maybe next time, if I lose again, I'm fighting him next time. Because there will be a next time. I'm not stopping till I win this this game. I'm, like, content now that I can do it. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm double-sided. Oh, I had to get that. I needed life. I need a crane kick. Wah! Oh, my God. When I get teamed up like that... Oh, Jesus Christmas again. I'm dead. Oh, I'm, I'm alive. I need a girl or Miyagi or somebody to come into my life. Ah. All right, guys. Three lives. Three lives. Last level. I know Chosen's at the end. I know it's the end. It's the spear guy. Oh, free life. Free life. Free life. Free life. Free life. Free life. Crane kick. Free life. Free life. Free life. All right, we got a guy behind me. So one behind me. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Oh, no, I wanted that guy to follow. The more dudes... Yeah, jump over him. I just want to... I don't want to kill you. I want to jump over you. Okay, I'm going to kill you. I, like, just want two dudes. Oh, my God. I'm so close. Oh, jump over his head. Get him. Get that piece of son of a bitch. Uh, all right, we're back to three lives. I gotta start using. Oh, uh, I, I, you guys, if I forget, remind me to use the double punch. I save the double punch for this level. All right, double punch everybody to death. Now I already used up every double punch I had. Like I used like thirty-two double punches. At least that guy stuck. Oh, I thought I had two guys behind me. Jesus Christmas, man. They, like, trap me. Yes, 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 yes. I'm... I was like, all I have to do is just not stop, and I'm good, and I frick it up again. I just gotta get two dudes behind me. That's my tactic now. Ready? We're just, we're just gonna play strategy. We're playing defense. Defense. Cobra Kai. Oh, Jesus Christmas. I want to not hurt you. Oh, I hate you. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Did I just lose... All right, guys, I I don't know if I should go offense or defense. It's literally offense or defense at this point. Because if I, if I get him set up, like, see, all right, we got one behind. If I do, oh, that's it. Perfect, perfect. And now I just got to play it right and jump exactly at the right time. And I can get all the way to chosen if I'm, if I'm good. Ready? This is defense. We're going defense or offense. And right now I'm going defense. There's no one that could attack me from the front. And I could get all the way to chosen. Hey, this is strategy. If Nintendo wants to play this way, I'll play this way. But I'm also going to have no crane kicks and no double punches. And it's, I know it's the boring way, but guys, I've never, I don't think I've ever beat this game in my life. And I'm going to do it. Oh, I got to jump into this level. Damn it, I got to jump in there. All right, back to skill. It'd be nice if I could do this flawlessly and get some crane kicks. We're almost... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you piece of... Sh come on, come on. Ah. Is that it? Oh, my God, one more. At least I got some. Oh, I think I pulled a muscle in my arm. 
I, I got some. I got some. Guys, this is the last life, by the way. All right. I'm very scared right now. I'm, I've got to be close to Chosen. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I've got to be close. I don't remember how far he is. Oh god, great, I have a spear guy chasing me. I know he's close. Like, like we've been going pretty far. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let that spear guy kind of travel. He could be like a blocker. Oh god. Now I just need to get the frig out of here. Crane. I'm like wonder oh Jesus Christ. I, I keep thinking I have a good strategy and then I get ganged up on. Oh, we're here. We're getting to the lanterns. Getting to the lanterns, guys. But guys, I don't have a whole lot of life. Crane kick. I just gotta grab lives and oh god, here we are. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Oh, did I just guys, I think I just I can just keep kicking chosen. Look at this. But wait. What the fuck? He gets his life back if he goes in the water? What kind of crap is that? Guys, look at this. He gets his life back if he goes in the water. What is that garbage? So I gotta let him come on the, the, the fight? Oh, guys. What was that garbage, though? I couldn't... You have successfully guided Daniel-san through... All of the challenges, greatest man ever, and have become a martial art. Guys, I just became a martial arts master. I think that might be the first time I've ever beaten Karate Kid. Nintendo always had the worst endings. That was it. Miyagi just gave me some ridiculous statement and said I'm a martial arts master and I win. On the last life, Z Thomas, I got very scared. For a second, when Chosen kept getting knocked in, what is that about? You have to let him land and fight him? And then even when I let him land, I think I kicked him off again and he still came back. So you literally have to let him land and stay on... Like, what kind of bullcrap is that when they can knock me in the water every time? Guys, I am... I, I And I think that's it. There's, like, nothing else you could do. You could do a one-on-one -on -one match, but you need two two players for that. But guys, you are epic. I, I honestly can't believe I, I I thought I was going to at least have to do one or two. I mean, I got all these drinks because I literally was like, I'm going to it's going to be a minute. It's going to be a minute. I'm going to take a while. We just beat Karate Kid one. I played this game many times, but never beat it. I beat Willow and Carnival for the NES and many other games. Carnival, one of my favorites. Very difficult game. I don't know if you've ever played Rygar. Rygar I remember playing all the time, and Rygar was, like, very difficult. So much going on in Rygar, and it, I feel like that was another one of those games where if you died, like, three or four times, you had to start all over again. Maybe Carnival was like that, too. That is the whole game, Z. Thomas. I kid you not, and believe it or not, I don't think I've ever beat it. I always remember getting stuck on the rain level. I do remember seeing the level with Chosen in it, but I don't think I've ever reached Chosen, and if I did, I don't remember it, and if I did, I probably also didn't beat him. But, that is the whole game. So if you can master that game, you pretty much could beat it in like 10 minutes, and then you're done. Time to play Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Let's go. I do not have Sega. I used to have all Sega stuff and everything. I got rid of all my Sega stuff. I used to have Dreamcast, all sorts of goodies, but no, no longer. Uh, was this game equal to a $60 AAA game today? Definitely not. And the funny thing is, this was probably like 50 bucks when it came out. I remember games being like $39.99 and $49.99 all the time at Toys R Us, and that was in the 80s. That happened in like the 80s, so clearly, considering the inflation and everything, games have went way down in price, if you consider that. But guys, at this point, it is, I've been on for four hours, and now that we beat the game, I mean, it was kind of perfect. We talked for like two or three hours, 
And then the game took me like an hour to figure out. So I think I'm going to call it there because honestly, I thought I'd play for like an hour or two. I thought I'd be done by like 11 and I would do the cartoon. So I think I'm going TLC Shock. What's your favorite animated superhero show growing up? Mine was Batman animated series. Super, super, I honestly... I didn't watch a lot of animated superhero shows. The only one I watched growing up was probably the X-Men animated one. And I can't really even think of anything else. I think the X-Men animated show was like one of the few superhero things I watched. I read a lot of comics, but I didn't watch a lot of TV or anything like that. J just like specific things. Watched a lot of movies. I love movies. Contra was expensive back in the 80s. I would love for someone to make a Cobra Kai 3D game or 2D. I got to check out the newest Cobra Kai game. I'm curious what it's all about. But guys, on that note, before I get into it, more talk, it's almost one in the morning where I am, four and a half hours close to on the stream. Like and subscribe if you haven't. I will be back 425 or probably more like 415. The game starts on Sunday. Saints, I'm watching the Saints game. They're playing the Falcons and the Niners are playing the Rams. I need the Niners to lose, and I need the Saints to win. It's do or die last week of football, and that is whether or not either the Niners are in the last wild card or the Saints. I know there's a Niners fan in here, but obviously I want the Saints to win, so I'm going to be live streaming it. We'll talk about whatever you guys want, so like and subscribe. Like I said, jump in on Sunday, 4.15 Eastern time, and I'll see you guys then. I appreciate everybody in the chat, Abbas, Broncos Country. Z Thomas, KP, Young West 79, and whoever, Duncan Bradley. There was a million other people in the chat, but I think a lot of you went to sleep. I mean, we still are holding strong at like 20 plus people, but I just, guys, it's been four hours. And honestly, I got to get up early. I got a bunch of work tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, I'll do the second episode of the cartoon. So if you guys are liking the Karate Kid cartoon, go check it out. It's on the channel now in full. I will get the second episode out probably tomorrow and we'll go from there. So have a good night, everybody. Peace out. Bing from Wisconsin. Go pack Z Thomas. Can't, can't fault you for loving them. So everybody appreciated. Good night. And I'll talk to you all soon. Have a good one. Peace out.